It's really so good to see all of you here. Please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now just a moment of silence for our men and women who are in the armed forces and for our police and our firefighters who protect us here in our community. Please be seated. Well, here we are again, and we are going to begin with a, a preview of the executive summary of the budget that ended on May 31st, 30, 21. And uh, Mrs. Wu, are you taking that piece of the uh, presentation? Yes. Yes, you Mayor. It? Yes, Mayor Board. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, our new treasurer go through the summary, and then we'll call the players as we need to. I just wanted to say thank you uh, again to uh, Irene and Garcia for guiding the executive staff through this entire process from the kickoff in late November and December. I want to thank CBRAC for being here. I want to welcome the board, the mayor, and the residents who attend as well. And thank the executive staff for their participation through all this. And now I'll hand it over to Ms. Wu for the uh, start. Thank you. And good evening, everyone. Um, so we will, um, I will present um, uh, the current year, uh, current year uh, forecast, how we're doing this current year, um, and then I'll give a brief overview, overview of uh, the proposed budget for next year. Um, and then like Mr. Swazi said, we'll be calling up each department head so that they can present their proposed capital projects for the next year. And then we'll end uh, the evening with a presentation by Mr. D. Francisco on his operating budget for the Department of Public Works and the Water Engineering Fund. Okay. So, very briefly, um, for the current fiscal year 2019 20, um, we are anticipating ending the year with a favorable variance of about $2.6 million. On the expense side, uh, we're anticipating a favorable. Uh, uh, variance of about 4.2 million. This is mostly as a result of uh, open position in various departments, delayed hiring, uh, retirements, and filling positions at lower salaries. Um, we've also had lower judgments and claims, and this is as a result of uh, cases settling at lower than anticipated, as well as a lot of cases being deferred to later calendars in the next fiscal year. Um, and we've also had lower third-party services expenses from consulting, contractual services, and legal fees. On the revenue side, um, we will be about approximately $1.5 million unfavorable to the budget. Um, and this is mostly as a result of some major projects that were deferred. They were anticipated to be done in the 2019-20 fiscal year, but now they are anticipated to begin in the next fiscal year. Uh, some of these projects are uh, the Business District Paving Project, um, the Nassau Boulevard uh, uh, Train Station Paving Project, um, and the 555 uh, Building Project um, on Stewart Avenue. Um, on the, these are projects that are expected to be reimbursed, um, therefore that's why this is on the revenue side. Um, question, though, would, would we in that case have lower expenses as well? That's we, correct. So, so they should we, be neutral in that case. Well, the, um, the expenses were allocated, and they were sitting in the capital projects funds. So, um, you know, so they're allocated, but the revenues never came in. So that's why we're unfavorable on the, rate, on the revenue side. Um, uh, but some of these very uh, favorable variances were offset by the one-time uh, receivable of the premium on securities from the bond issuance that we did recently. We received 1.1 million in bond premiums that we received. Um, and we also um, had higher than expected fines and forfeitures. Um, some of that was as a result of the building department's efforts to close out all uh, older building permits. Um, and some of those uh, uh, COs, uh, the permits were not um, closed out on a timely basis, and therefore they were forfeited. 
We also received higher than anticipated state aid for mortgage taxes and from the TRIPS program, which is a consolidated highway improvement program. Um, so out of the $2.6 million favorable variance, um, the $1.1 million of the premium that was received will be uh, uh, transferred to a reserve to pay back the bonds. And then, as in prior years, we anticipate rolling a portion of this, the remaining savings of $1.5 million. We anticipate rolling about $900,000 to help fund the next year's uh, budget. On the next slide, we're, we're seeing the trends of the property tax levy. The blue bar represents the inflation factor. Um, this is the factor that's provided by the Office of the State Controller's Office every year. Um, the orange bar represents a combination of both the inflationary factor and the tax-based growth factor. That's the second factor that's uh, computed um, in order to arrive at the tax levy limit. Um, and that factor is provided by the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. And the green bar represents the actual tax levy that was assessed. So as you can see, over the last five years, the actual tax levy assessed was equal to or less than the actually the actual tax levy uh, that was allowed to be assessed, the orange bar. Um, for this uh, proposed budget, the 2021 budget, um, we are proposing a tax levy increase of 2.28%, which is both the inflationary factor and the tax-based growth factor. Um, the third component of the tax levy limit is the allowable uh, carryover from prior years. So if any, in any given year uh, the village does not raise taxes to the full extent allowed by the tax limit law, a portion of, those, of that, uh, that that could have been raised is carried forward into the next year. So for this fiscal year, the village has about $784,000 that it can additionally raise in taxes. And that represents about another 1.5%. So the proposed budget does not include that additional 1.5, it includes just the 2.28%. But the village has that um, option to raise additional taxes. This is Wu, um, just to point out, so the bottom line is, is that what we're looking for is a tax increase of about 2.28%. If we wanted to, we could go up to 3.78%, we're going to stay below that. This, this budget that's proposed right now, right. Does, right, does not include the, the additional 1.5. Right, right. It's proposed then, to stay at the 2.28. Right, and if we go over the last five years, um, when I add up what the actual property tax level was, uh, it's come out to an average of 1.29%. So that's what I was looking at as I added the numbers. So I just wanted to say, excellent job. Um, on the summary budget, um, the 2.28% that's being levied in taxes is funding a budget of 66.1 million. That represents about 1%, a little less than 1% uh, increase over the prior year. Um, and again, that's funded through the tax levy, the 918,000 of current year surplus, and um, other non-tax revenues. Uh, the 750000 again, represents, as in prior years, uh, a proposal to replenish the termination reserves. Um, as you know, throughout the year, you have employees, uh, long-term employees, who retire or leave village service with a lot of accrued time, um, which is uh, typically paid out upon their termination. Um, we fund those termination payouts through the termination reserves. Um, and the village has typically tried to um, adopt a policy of having about $2 million set aside in the reserves. So every year during the budget process, we propose you know, replenishing that reserve to maintain that level. So that's that proposal. So the next slide shows um, our uh, expenses by category. Um, we're showing that the proposed budget of $66.1 million um, represents about a 5% increase from the current year forecast. Um, this is mainly due to increases in salary, uh, benefit in taxes. Um, it's expected that uh, open positions will be filled. Um, and in, in addition, this budget uh, proposes adding uh, five more additional employees. Um, just so that you know, the, uh, the uh, new positions were staggered, so it's not expected that all positions will be here you know, June 1st. It's more realistic expectation of when 
those positions can be hired, you know, depending on the civil service uh, process. Um, the increase is also due to uh, increase in debt service um, and contractual and third party services. Um, as many of you are, are aware, the recycling costs are, are new costs to the village, so that's causing an increase, um, as well as maintenance of software, which is due to all the new technology um, among many different departments. The major components of the budget, the expense budget, um, you know, 55% of the budget um, relates to salary, benefits, and taxes. Um, just as a side note, this, uh, this cost does not include the raises uh, due to the PBA contract that's expiring at the end of this year. So these numbers do not include that. Um, there's contribution to co uh, capital projects at 12%. Um, consulting, contractual third-party services at 7% or $4.8 million. Um, debt service is about 6% at $4.1 million. And the contribution to the library is 5% or 3.3%, 3.3 million. The increase is year over year, it's about 1% or 600,000 dollars, and that's mostly as a result of the increase in the debt service. On the revenue side, um, revenues are increasing 14% over the forecast, and again, this is due to the major projects that were deferred. Um, the, the projects are expected to be completed in the next fiscal year, and as a result, the reimbursements for those projects as well. Um, and then those increases are offset by one-time items that occurred um, in this fiscal year, such as the premium on securities and forfeiture of deposits. The major components of the uh, other non-tax revenues include uh, public work service, about 3.7 million, buildings department fees about 2 million, fines and forfeitures are about 1.7 million, federal, state, and local aid, which includes mortgage taxes and chips, that's about 1.4 million. Non-property taxes, these are the public utility, uh, gross receipts taxes, and franchise fees, and that's about a million dollars. And then we do have other real property tax items, and this is mostly the, the pilots, right? So uh, certain individuals are, uh, do not pay real estate taxes, they pay pilots for a period of time, so that's where the, uh, these items appear. And the major changes year over year, it's about 1% or $145,000, and this is mostly as a result of higher uh, chips reimbursements uh, anticipated due to more road paving occurring in the next fiscal year. Okay, so uh, the next portion of the presentation will be the presentation by each department head on their proposed capital projects. Um, each department head will uh, be um, coming up to present those projects. Um, I would uh, ask you to reference um, in the budget book, there's a capital project summary page which lists all the projects um, on one page, if you're so inclined to see all the projects on one page. Um, otherwise, we will be presenting each individual department on the slide. The first department to present their projects is Mr. DeFrancisco for Department of Public Works. Mr. DeFrancisco, before you go, um, I just wanted to cover a couple things that we were on. Um, first thing I just wanted to say is uh, I had an opportunity to work a lot with both I and Garcia. Uh, in preparing this, and one of the things that we had done about a month ago is that Mrs. Wolf had given a presentation on the overall view of the debt in the village. Um, and the bottom line is, is that one of the things that we had asked this year is that each department had, when they give their budget, would actually rank things so that this way we would have an understanding of what each department had felt was the most important. So basically, everything was ranked one, two, three, four, and down the line. So when, you act, when everyone actually sees the budget, I think what will happen is you will see a difference uh, in that ranking. So if you're not sure what those numbers are, that's exactly what it is. Um, the question I have for you, Mrs. Wu, is that um, what is the total amount of request for capital projects in total this year? Um, I believe it's somewhere around 17 million, am I correct? That's correct. It's about 17.6 million, of which a uh, portion of that is expected to be reimbursed, about 1.2. Okay, so of the 17 million, what we're proposing to do, if I understand it correctly, is that we're going to pay about 8.5 million 
or eight million out of um, cash, and then we're talking about bonding about nine million. Is that correct? Yes, about nine point five. Mm -hmm. Okay. The amount of pro um, capital projects that we're pro projecting for next year is also about seventeen million, I believe. Is it? Seventeen point seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. And assuming that we basically run the same way. We're going to probably then have about eight million or so paid for out of cash, and we're going to be bonding probably about another nine million. Um, well, actually, next year there's a major project. Um, there's the firehouse. Um, oh, without the firehouse, well, is that included in the firehouse? Okay. For next year, yeah, yes. that, that seventeen million includes the firehouse, okay. and so that project most likely be bonded in sure. its entirety. So sure. we would be bonding approximately fifteen million next year. Okay. All right. So I have mentioned giving my opinion to a couple of the trustees. I'll state it here publicly in the courtroom uh, that, in my opinion, I think that what we have to do, is, it's just not an opinion, it's just math, is that the bottom line is that if we bond more than $3 million in the year, what we'll be doing is simply adding to building debt. What happened was over the last six years, we have been able to offset and to be able to utilize increased debt. Because what we did was we significantly we were able to find ways for, shall we say, money that was not being spent wisely. And we also had a reduction down um, in employees. We reached a point to where I think we basically are probably at the correct level for employees, and we may adjust this a little bit. But the bottom line is, is that as we're sitting here now going forward, we are now have the principal plus interest is starting to grow in the village. And right now that's at 6%. And if you want to put it in perspective, the principal and interest payments that we now have is actually larger than the contribution now that we make to the library. So to me, one of the things I think that, at least from my point of view, and I know that there are different opinions up on the board, is that I think we should try to keep that in perspective when we consider how much we're actually bonding. And the reason for it is, I'll give you simple numbers, is that in our village in total, we have about $54 million in debt. Even with the state reimbursement for the water, as Steve Francisco will correct me if I'm wrong, but our commitment to the water uh, project with the one point dioxin is still going to be around $20 million. So even if we're going to pay 60%, that's about correct. If we take $10 million for the firehouse, which is assume, let's say, it's somewhere to 8 to $10 million. And then the other potential we're looking at is potentially maybe doing something with St. Paul's. Well, bottom line is, is that if, even if you take St. Paul's out of the picture, now you're talking about taking the debt of the village and moving it up to about $84 million. So for us, one of the things I think we need to do is to budget, is to actually stay in line. And I know there's a difference between what people would feel that we need to do, or what we have to do, and what you want to do. Those are three different divisions. So I just wanted to express that opinion, and I think that, at least for me, I think it's something that the board should consider. Thank you. Uh, so I'll start with the um, Public Works Capital Project List. And again, as, as Deputy Mayor Goldberg mentioned, they are in uh, priority order. Uh, the first three that you see is a, uh, a roll kind of linked together. It's road paving and, and the uh, corresponding sidewalk work that goes along with road paving. So I have a 1A, B, and C. Uh, if you go to uh, the next slide uh, gives you an overview of um, what we look like uh, in regards to uh, paving in the village, uh, actually going back to 2005, so uh, the last uh, 15 years. Uh, but more recently, um, we have uh, approximately 260 lane miles in the village, uh, which includes all of our parking lots. Uh, we if we were to uh, maintain a 20-year repaving goal, if you look at a road with a 20 year, having a 20-year lifespan, um, you would try, want to try to average 13 um, uh, lane miles a year in paving. Um, with parking lots included in that, that's probably a, an aggressive amount of paving each year, uh, considering the fact that the, the cost of paving does go up each year. Uh, so the number I'm proposing this year for or 2020 is about 9.84 miles of paving, uh, which is highlighted in the uh, right-hand column. We still have some work left over from 2019, which will be starting actually shortly, um, uh, in the next few months. Uh, the weather has been very favorable. 
Uh, but we also do need to go out to bid for a new paving contract. Our current contract is expired and we need to go out to bid uh, for the 2020 year. So uh, the numbers I'm proposing here for the paving budget are projections uh, uh, based on uh, what we think the costs are going to be going forward. I do have some approximate costs listed on the slide in the middle for paving, reconstruction, and, and concrete work. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, I do present a list of what we are proposing. I'm sorry. Have we always used a 20 year repayment goal? Was it previously 25 years? So a little bit more than 20. Since, since I've been here, we've done the 20 maybe prior to me. Um, when I joined the board, there was no goal. He's the board. I only remember 20. In my, my experience. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's my experience the here and before coming here, based on engineers that work with is that the average lifespan rule of thumb is 20 years. The variable is that now roads are found the same way in parking lots so the same abuse that great lane miles do. So it's a rule of thumb. So to deviate from it slightly isn't really, really the deal with this. It's not an exact measure. I don't want to pave a road just to say paving a road to maintain a, 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 an estimated or a lane mile. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I but uh, just to, to give you an idea of uh, what we're planning for uh, 2020, I have a preliminary list on slide 11, uh, and this is just a quick rundown of uh, how I came up with the number I proposed, the $2.2 million for paving this year, uh, along with the sidewalk work. Okay. Uh, this is this is closed county roads? That's correct. We, the county pays their own roads. We don't pay county roads, correct. So, the only parking would be Nassau Boulevard? The, that's correct. The, the one south of the tracks, not the not the one with the paving stones. No, um, I understand that. Yeah, that's the only one. Well, we we've, we've addressed a number of parking lots over the last few years. Uh, nine E will, will be. We have the whole spring. We're doing, we're doing nine E will be done. Nine E and eight over here, right up uh, by Novita, will be done uh, within the next couple of months. Uh, we've done just about every railroad parking lot since I've been here. Stewart Manor, Country Life Press. Um, Clinton Park and Field. Um, so we've been slowly addressing each parking lot that, that is. Uh, Joe, 90 is the one south of uh, Sears. South of Sears, yes, that's correct, yes. yes. And the, with the Nassau, uh, with uh, Stuart Manor, we were reimbursed for that one, right? That's correct, the railroad reimbursed us for that. We're hoping we do have the Nassau Boulevard train station on the docket for this year, the paving stones, and we do have a pre-approval from the railroad to be reimbursed for that also. That's on my list uh, as cap for capital projects this year. And what's the scope of that, Jim? Uh Well, the bid, the bid is going out hopefully next week. Uh, there's a number of different variables we're putting, uh, <coughs> options that we're putting into the bid specs. Um, uh, try to retain as many bricks as we can and, and replace ones that need to be replaced. Replace all of the bricks if, if you know, yeah, we, we, we want to see what kind of pricing we get back. The railroad has pre-approved us for $1.6 million as part of the community fund to do this work. Um, I don't anticipate it costing that much, uh, but you know, we won't know until we actually get the bid results back. So, On that fund, if I correct, the initial amount was two, uh, two and a half million. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, of the two and a half million, because I know we're right in the middle of tearing apart um, Joy Park Road, which is the biggest segment of that, okay? Um, how much have we not used of the fund? Uh, about about two, four point three. Two, yeah. yeah. So we've only used about two hundred thousand. Not even. Not even. And, okay. and quite frankly, they haven't paid us yet either, right? They paid us about forty-five thousand oh. dollars that we submitted for reimbursement. We okay. Really use, and we don't really. Use, we've had this discussion. We don't anticipate we're going to be using a lot. Right. Well, no, that's what we said. Yeah. Landscaping, which we have. Yeah, we have to get the landscaping at the various rivers. But landscaping, they're required to do that. Yeah, that's what I was just wondering. Is the landscaping on our tab or not? No, not all of it, no. Landscaping is on some of the landscaping is on their tab. That's what we'll give her the first part. Where do we get back? Where do we negotiate? Right. When the bids come back, we can use that money. We can use that for the landscaping. If we, you know, I, I guess I mean, yeah, so I don't, have 2.3 million in the fund. So right. bottom line is, is that what they're talking about is they, they've been approved on the Nassau County talk to 1.6. Yeah. 
Now, again, we don't know if we're going to use 1.6, but they're approved up to that amount. We'll that's, figure that's out unless we go to the bids, we'll, we'll decide as a board. Yeah, if, if the, the project only costs a million, then 600000 goes right back into the fund. And right. For yeah. use for other expenses. Thank you. We're going to plant those huge trees that Paul wanted to plant next to the <laughs> Red Bulls. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. I'm still there. Why did the Red One of the streets I didn't see on the list is uh, Stratford between Tannis Pond and High Park Road, and one of the and my concern is just given the increased traffic that we're seeing now on Stratford. Of the work being done yeah. on the third track. Is that something that we can consider potentially getting reimbursed for? Yeah, I mean, this is, oh, be, be reimbursed for. Uh, doesn't that would fall within the scope of, of uh, I mean, I, we can ask. Oh, no, no, no. The way it works is if they cause damage directly related to what's going on, they do. It has nothing to do with the farm. Okay? So, for example, if you could easily show you know, they were doing work over at the, near the high school and parking on the grass there and broke all the curbs. Boom. No, I They're paying for that. Right, no, I understand. I'm talking about the increase of the vehicle traffic that we're seeing on track. Well, that's what we were talking about. Could you say that? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're talking about. Are you going to go through all the items? or? So the next item, number two on the, on the uh, priority list, would be uh, sewer repairs. And this is obviously uh, an, an item um, with the approval last year and the purchase of a new sewer van. Uh, we, sorry. Back up, back up. Yeah, I Walk me through with these redoing road. So I'm trying to figure out, I you know one of the things we have talked about is bandwidth. To me, my own simple view, road is a road is a road. We did 10 roads last year, we did 10 the year before, 30 the year before, we're doing 15 now. 98% of it is the same work. We don't do the work, we just oversee it. Correct. So I'm trying to understand why bandwidth would be an issue. So, um, so based on, so the, the, the preliminary, uh, work starts with evaluation of the roads. If you look at the chart I have up on the screen under the rating, uh, that's the number rating I've shown the chart in the past. We had the roads evaluated on a 1 to 10 scale, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best. Right. That was um, about four years ago by an outside firm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so we don't have any roads uh, really below four at this point. So we're, we're addressing roads that uh, at the time that survey was done was fours or fives which in regards to the evaluations, those are the worst roads that we have left to pave. So the initial evaluation starts with the engineering department, evaluating those roads. Go out in the village and, and look at the roads. You know, it doesn't need to be done. What's the wear and tear on it? We look at the history of when the last time the road, road was paved, the volume of, of work on the road. Uh, that's how we come to the decision of what needs to be done. And, and of course, budgeting and all that falls into the process. The yeah, next, the next one, so we decide to pave a road. Okay. Um, the first thing that do, um, needs to be done is surveying work needs to be done on the road, the crown of the road. Um, you know, does the road need to be reconstructed or does it need to be mill and paved? Mill and paved is obviously a lot cheaper. You, you, you scrape off the asphalt, you put a new layer down. If there's reconstruction work that needs to be done, if the road needs more work, um, the initial work actually starts with the street department. Uh, our own street department would go out and do base repair on the road ahead of the paving. Uh, wait, wait. So we go out, the, on the list it was a five four years ago. Okay. We go out and we, however we do, we agree with that it's a five. Four. Maybe it's a four. Someone else made it says deteriorated over the last right. couple of years. Correct. So our guys go out and look at the road. How long does that take? An afternoon? On the length of the road and the condition of the road. Correct. Okay. Now, now they're really starting to get into okay, what's got to be done to this road? Right. So, there's the road itself, and then there's all the sidewalks, curbs, and aprons on that road. 
Uh, every one of those needs to be evaluated also, down to each flag on the sidewalk. Uh, survey work needs to be done uh, in terms of uh, pitch of the sidewalks, you know, if there's, if there's lips in the sidewalk, damage to the sidewalks, curves, which is pretty extensive work. That does take a lot of time. Maps are drawn because each resident needs to be notified uh, by certified mail of which sidewalk flags on their block need to be replaced. Joe, none of this has been done by the outside. This is all no, this is all done internally. Yes. Just so we yes, this is done by the village engineering department. Yes, so, so they'll so evaluate, like I said, driveway aprons, uh, uh, curbs, drop curbs, and and sidewalks on in the paving zone. Um, and uh, so you know, letters are drawn um, uh, and mailed to residents, and that's that's a pretty extensive uh, pre-work that's done by the engineering department. At the same time, the street department is doing pre-work on the road itself, base repair um, for if we're reconstructing the road. They need to um, prepare the all the valves in the road for paving, all the gas valves, water main valves. Um, um, need to be uh, manhole covers and stuff, castings for the manholes, all need to be prepped for paving work to be done. So that's the pre work that's done. The next step is the paving company comes in and does the work. But while they're doing the work, they need to be over, we need to have oversight over their work. If they're pouring concrete and the spec calls for uh, 4,000 psi of concrete, we need to be there to make sure that they're pouring 4,000 years of concrete and, and, and that they're meeting the standards that we need to meet. There's plenty of times where they pour concrete and we've made them rip it out because it, maybe the, the engineer overseeing the job wasn't, you know, was somewhere else in the block where they were pouring concrete and he's come back and he wasn't happy with the work they did, wasn't, didn't think it met standard, and we make them rip it out and do it again. How many times in the last, pick your time frame, a year, three years, whatever? Do we do major construction of a road versus minimal invasion? What's the percentage? Rough, rough idea. Uh, what do you do exactly? What rough. Rough. Uh, that's a tough one. I'm not. Sh I don't know that. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, when the survey being done, if you walk in front of a house and you see a crack slab, it's like a four foot square piece of concrete, let's say. Those are obvious, you want to fix that. If you see the ones uplifted by a tree road, tree road, that's obvious, you want to fix that. But those aren't the only two the engineer looks at because the other other slabs of concrete might have uh, something to do, but they don't look to the naked eye, but he has to measure it because he, it's not just the summer walking. In the winter, if, if the slabs are on level or floor lines are right, you'll have puddle buildup. So the engineer is looking at 88 compliance to all the seasons but not just the people fall out. So it does take a little more time than just putting entries on boxes for damage. Yeah, there's also, and that's a good point, uh, Ms. Swazi brought up, um, if there are tree roots involved, um, the Parks Department, arborists need to be involved. If, we, if we're going to be disturbing the roots of the tree, we need to know how much of this tree we're disturbing. If, it's, if, if the, tree, the tree might have to come down. You know, we don't want to we don't want to disturb the roots of a tree and weaken it, uh, and that would cause problems down the road. So. Um, that's part of the evaluation process leading up to the work. So, the utility that they're cutting this piece right now in Garden City, they have to repave the whole street when it's finished. Right now, it's like a putting a patch. No, you know, the village doesn't require a, a, a curb to curb repair on on paving. Although certain jobs we do negotiate with the with the uh, for larger jobs, more paving work to be done uh, in regards to the larger yeah, projects. On the street to have that, you know, cut it and cut it. But sure. Yeah. yeah like, we recently, we just did a, a water game on Pine Street, it was like a mile long. So, we just give the system department coordinated with the National Grid to say, hey, if you have any customers, if you have people who want customers on this block, would you ask them to ask you that? Uh, and, and so, so they did one side of the street, we did the other side of the street, so we repaid the whole thing. So, so it's a case by case basis, but the investment um, uh, we have for the utilities. And uh, sometimes a project, especially next year, projects, we're giving so much of the road, we get a little more out of it than they have on for a and, and, and that's a good point. We also do, before we, we plan the paving of a road, we coordinate with the utilities to ensure that they don't have a project to replace a gas main on a road next year that we're paving this year. So there's a coordination involved there. Um, and just 
this falls to really one person in the engineering department. It's not really the whole department. Um, I really have one engineer dedicated to paving in the paving project in the village. So, um, I was told by someone that you don't inspect sidewalks on a regular basis. You only react to um, resident complaints. We we don't proactively investigate sidewalks around the village on a regular basis. No. Joe, if I, if I can stay on roads as well. Sure. Um, the amount of money we set aside last year uh, was about two point three million. That's correct. Yes. The money that we used for that um, was that primarily used for roads, or was that the money that was used for or where we're doing the dump and the, all that stuff? So there was two point three million dollars last year allocated for three projects: the employee parking lot at the DPW yard. Right. Um, I actually have it up on the screen here. Uh, the plow storage area at the yard right. and for the dump area. Okay, so hold on, that, that's fine. So we still paid for roads last year. And the road, the way, yeah. right, hold on, and the way the reason that we paid for roads is because we basically could not even keep up with the pace of the roads that we were doing. And basically, if I understand that correctly, we were then probably taking the money from two years ago, or the money we had set aside two years ago, to basically do the roads that we did last year. That yes, correct? that's correct. And, and okay, so, okay, I'm sorry, okay. No, no, that's fine. It's the, the water main was actually one of the, we, we paid Pine Street last year, right. which was part of was part of the water main replacement well, project. Whatever, wherever, so where do you pay? Yeah. I'm okay. just saying, so basically, the money that we set aside last year was to do these other projects. Correct. Right. And we couldn't even keep up with the amount of work that we had in hand. So what ends up happening is, is that we're now sitting there, and we're now using the money from basically two years ago. That's correct. Okay. So here's my point. And, and I think that your objective is very good, and you are very aggressive with the road pay. In my opinion, just as Stephen McCrean, uh, Tristan McCreen has mentioned, is that instead of using the 20-year cycle, maybe we should try to use 25 and be a little less aggressive. And here's the reason why I'm saying that. We basically, in the last two years, couldn't even keep up with the pace for the amount of money we're allocating for roads. So one of the things I did was I looked back, and Brian was 100% correct, in that in the past, there was no plan. Okay? Whatever we're going to pay, we're going to pay. And what happened was, previous boards, what they did was they kind of chinsed. And what I did was I went back 10 years. And for the three years before I became a trustee, we averaged only $435,000 a year in roads. And that's how we got to the position that we're in. Okay? And you recognized that when you joined, okay? and when you were involved. And over the last six years, we have averaged four and a half times that amount of money. So all I'm saying to you is that, again, going back to the whole big picture, is that with everything that we need to do in this village, with all the stuff that we're doing, is it not possible for us to reduce that 2.2 million to 1.2 million or one and a half million? Because the bottom line is, is that we can't even maintain that pace. And, and the reality of it is we have so many needs of the village that I think that for six years, we go at four and a half times what we used to do before. I just think, again, Maybe we could take that schedule of yours, which I commend you for everything we did, because residents recognize what's been done. But maybe we could just take it like 75% of that number and put it down. So, no, I can't, well, I can't, if, I, if we do that, Trustee Bolger, uh, I certainly would like DPW to go around and take a look at the streets that really need it. So we have a priority. So we have a priority. But doesn't the amount of wear mm -hmm. on the road have to do with the Joe? Doesn't the amount of wear? I mean, you're all talking about this as if this is just control. We can control it to that extent. It doesn't the amount of wear and tear that the road puts up with in traffic have a lot to do with how often it is repaired? It might have to be repaired more slowly than what you just described to us, or it might have to be repaired much more quickly. And we seem to be getting more and more traffic. So I mean, this is a little bit tight, I think. What do you think? 
Well, I, I mean, absolutely. A road uh, like Stewart Avenue from, say, Clinton to Franklin gets mm -hmm. used much more frequently than, say, a other way, place or something like that. Well, well, those are county roads, so we wouldn't do those. The county does cover them. Yes, those okay, are county roads. So, yeah. so um, yes, you're, you're correct. The volume of traffic on the roads is going to dictate how much wear and tear the road takes. So. Um, you know, like I said before, we're not going to pave a road just for the sake of paving a road. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is yeah. precisely why we shouldn't ask for the budget number that's been working for the last. Well, I mean, years. I think the caveat is we went ten years back, and so it was only half a million bucks. It was obviously way too low. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in favor of it. You guys, I wouldn't be in favor of cutting it in half arbitrarily because you haven't been in the past spending all of the money we allocated. I think it's nice to, uh, or more prudent way is to. Expect the worst and then be pleased when you, you don't need it all, you don't run through it all because you don't pay the roads just for the sake of it. Just because we allocate the money doesn't mean you can spend it. It doesn't mean I would short sheet what you're doing on it. Maybe we should maybe the, paper, leave it. Maybe the, another way to do it is maybe you should take a look, Joe, just double check the rows that you have suggested to be sure that they do need to be done. For, for sure. And, and, and that might save us a few bucks there. I think the one caveat I have is that we do need to go out to bid for a new paving contract this year. So, um, you're going to do, do that anyways. No, I know, but if the prices are significantly higher, um, or lower, we might be forced to cut back. Joe, I understand that, but again, like I said, listen, I'm not simply saying that we stop paying the road. All I'm saying to you is that if we can basically sit here, as a, that's why it's called a budget. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not yeah. just called just guys can just put down wherever you want to do. It's not called that. It's called a budget. Wait, not that? And, yeah, it's and, not I, and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and I'm just saying. Sure? And, I'm just saying <laughs> and I'm just saying that I think that if we sit here and like I said, we've been at a pace of four and a half times what we used to do before, and we can't keep up with that pace no matter what. All I'm saying to you is, is that I think what makes sense is. Is that like Trustee Macrino said? We, we, if we take your very aggressive schedule, go for 20 to 25 years or something else, there may be something to where, and again, if we do this in a lot of departments, we can adjust our budget to where it becomes reasonable. That's what I'm Are saying. Are we saying well, that budget's not reasonable because we're 1% of last year? Wait, wait, I, I would, I, it may well be true that you could reduce it to 22 years or whatever. 20 something. Right? But is the reason we is a reason we are not getting done on the schedule is because we have a manpower productivity problem. That's what I was trying to get to with my line of questions. So if the roads really are supposed to be done roughly every 20 years, give or take, and each road might be different, but are we just not getting to it because we're not getting to it? That's a different question than what's supposed to be done and how we should be budgeting. What I because heard, we should be budgeting as to what should be done. Right, and what I heard was it varies because they assess each road yeah. based on the condition it's in. They're using a prudent budget number. They have never exceeded it. I do you have know, an additional we're not, person. It's not as if for two and a half million dollars over the tax cap this year and we had to blame the roads for it. Do you know what I mean? It's a prudent budget number. It's been working in the past. They go as fast as they need to. I don't see any reason why we need to. It's his budget number. And, yeah. and the, again, the bottom line is, so why don't, what? If his budget, if he thought the prudent number was three million, would we just say, okay, well, we're just going to do three million? If he presents a case that says, well, you just we can't do, do it. everything that you want. So take the firehouse right. off. You, you pay for it. Oh, stop. What do you mean? Oh, no, no. There's so much show. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. If you don't have to trade, his right. argument is arbitrary. Right. 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 If you had. Can you add, answer to your manpower question? No, I not. If you had two full time people just working on roads, would you meet the schedule? I would get more done. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's. I think you think a lot of the road paving work is done behind the scenes in terms of, of surveying work about road the, the 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 So yes, what, so I'm going to say yes. But what asking is, would more employees in that area help you get the schedule done faster? I, I would say yes, but keep in mind we did have another employee last year, so this will be the first year that we have a, a construction inspector, a new full-time construction inspector, someone we didn't have last year. So I did add a body last year. So two questions. What's the bottleneck? Is the bottleneck the paving company, or is the bottleneck the, the manpower that you have? Well, the paving this year actually hinged on the water main project. 
So we, we, we had to wait for the water main to be done. We had to wait for health department approval. Once that was done, then we were able to pave the road. Um, in fact, we have a project from last year, Meadow Street. Again, the, the, uh, the plans for the water main repair are with the health department right now. When they approve it, if they don't send it back for changes, and it'll go back and forth a couple of times, then we will do the water main, then we'll pave Meadow Street. Okay, but, yeah, but that's a particular street. Right? That's that's a pretty significant chunk of road. I understand that, but you can't do it because of X. But you have Y and Z streets that you could do, which don't deal with a water main problem. Correct. Right? This year is a little different because we need to have to bid for a new paving contract. We, yeah. we, we were working off of the same paving contract. I, I get that, but if you look at a lot of the village, the, the length of the street is the same. And you may not do a whole street. Like if you look at Houston, Roxbury, all those me metal, you know, all the, I mean, um, Meadbrook, they're all pretty much the same. It's a grid. You may not do the whole street, right? The whole street may not be a five, it may only be part of the street. That's correct, yes. Right? So it just seems that we should be able to, maybe a little better, maybe not, assess how long it takes us to go from A to Z to get the street done, and then that would help us, is is it unrealistic to have a $2.2 million number, because we're never gonna get to 10 miles, it's just not feasible, or is like Trustee McCreno said, the bottleneck somewhere else. So that, that would help us, I think, figure out, is it 2.2, should it be 1.8, is it you know nine miles a year or six miles a year? I can tell you, when we used to do four and five, that was not a good number. That's all I can tell you. No, no, I agree with you 100%. My yeah, other right. question is, is that last year, didn't you, I thought, maybe my memory is wrong, but didn't you come to us and say that you were going to look to hire to add a person who was going to help you with all of these additional projects? We did. We did. You did? Yes, we did. <clears throat> so, he, so that person is helping you, like, with the bathrooms in the, in the library with all the other things they're helping you with all those he's, other things he's been he's been at the water tower every day he's been overseeing some of the work psng has been doing in the village so yes he's, he's been he hit the ground running he's he's out there every day yes because he was hired as a construction inspector to oversee construction projects in the village and inspect the work to make sure it's done properly and, and that's exactly what he's he involved in all these projects with him yes he is yeah can I just make two points? One is that Joseph of Mr. Francisco just hit on an interesting point. When the utilities come in, we are responsible for permitting them and overseeing them. So that, those are not projects that we are doing as a builder, but we're still involved with. The other thing is, to your point, just the lower for people. Mathematically, the four hundred thousand in front, the four hundred thousand dollar of budget from years ago and the two million dollar one point six today, um, they're not necessarily apples to apples because of the one of the things that we talk about when we do roads is that some roads are begging for reconstruction, but cosmetically you can mill and pave them and you think everyone thinks you have a new road when it was is really a shortcut to buying five to seven years on that road. The real job is to rebuild it and spend eight hundred thousand dollars rebuilding versus three hundred thousand repaving. So some of those I'm not saying it was that way, but I've seen the county do time and time again. East of Clinton, going toward Roseville Field, they paved that last year. They were not going to do the curves until we met with the county executive and her DW staff and said the right way to do this is do the curves. The curves are invisible. So they, they put more dollars into it, but they were going to take the cheap way out originally. That can go on anywhere. So one of the rules we have around here is that if we're going to do the road, we do it, we do what it's asking for and not what looks good and gets us out of the now. So that's why I asked. And that's why the last time we did versus I don't know. But, but that four hundred thousand does matter. Because in regards to what Trustee Dorney said, the bottom line is, in the past, there was no plan. Right. Okay, this board has sat here in the last six years, and we have sat there department by department, where we're sitting there saying that whether or not it's equipment, whether or not it's vehicles, no matter what in the world it is, we have sat here in six years and have worked at an unbelievable pace to simply catch up there. I still remember the first time we ran that report for me, giving me the age of every single vehicle that we had in the village. I mean, I thought we were going back to the Stone Age when I looked at some of those years. Yeah, okay. I include 1947. Exactly. Right. Well, 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 so the reality of it is, is that I think the point, the point that the, the Brian point that I, which is an excellent one, is that we had no plan here, 
And, and now we've been working diligently over the last six years. So all I'm saying to you is, is that, you know. And I agree with that, and that's why I said I don't see a huge reason to reduce what's a major quality of life. Um, the reason, the well, right, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is not to stop it. What I'm saying to you is that, that you can sit there and you can say, you know what, instead of 2.2, could we reduce it down to 1.8? Let's assume we can do that. So here's so why that's, I would so that's say that's a point. bad idea when budgeting is because he doesn't know. He's got an open bid he's got to do this year. He hasn't ever spent that much money, so there's very low risk in leaving that in as a worst case number. And if you, go, very by, unlikely and if you go by that by. theory, then you could never reduce any number that you've done for a number of years because you no, say we have just to this much. Oh, I'm just this one. On this okay. Okay. Yes. Can I in, other, in other areas where you have hard facts that you can reduce year over year, fine. Year over year, it's been like this. Well, I don't understand why we would go to a 25 year, all of it, like kind of arbitrarily. No, no, no. Okay. How much does it cost to reassess the roads? Well, how much did that, that survey cost uh, four years ago when we did it? Right? Because it is a four year old survey. Uh, it was like $20,000. Yeah. So, so yeah. wouldn't it be clear yeah. that maybe every five years we, we resurvey the roads? Yes, yeah. that is the plan. Yes, yeah. it, it is. Okay. Yeah. The reason we did that, by the way, is because, and I've experienced this um, in my career, is that people, they want to sell the house, they look out of the road and they see alligator cracks. There's nothing wrong with engineering much that road, but they want it to look nice so they can sell the house more. We did that to take pressure off ourselves and use the board. Because if you have people coming at you to pay the road, then what are you going to say? They, they, they keep them arguing. What we do is we say, let's, let's turn this into factual information. Let's have engineers assess this on the New York State 1 to 10 scale. And now we have a, a blueprint to follow. And even though it's not static, because every year the thing on which could change, but we keep up on that. Well, that was the time I was, was going to get to. Maybe we do the survey every year and set a budget off of that, right? We say we're not going to have any road that's a five or worse and, and then set a budget off of that as opposed to, you know, setting the 2.8 million. Because that, that can then allow you to have the flexibility to adjust the number based on what the conditions of the roads are. And $20,000 is not, you know, a small number that we can do with that. Once you take these parking miles out of the equation, which are part of the lane miles, because they don't get the same attention, they, they're, like, they're very deteriorated. And so, but robots, I think we're really caught up right before five level now. We're at ones and twos before. Does the price of petroleum affect the contract contract price? It's the biggest part of the price. Yeah, it'll be the, yeah. When petroleum's up at $90, yeah. $100, yeah, the price is high, we, we should see. Just, just come to well, let's hope we get our bids out before this. <laughs> but, but, there, but, there's no, but there's no fluctuation. That, that price is locked in the contract yes. for the length of the contract. Okay. Number two. <laughs> 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 Yes, Mrs. Altman to order breakfast. <laughs> so, uh, sewer repairs. Uh, I think we're all familiar with some of the uh, the, um, the the, the uh, severe work or severe damage that we had on uh, Whitehall the last few years. Um, the village, we were being proactive last year. We, the uh, sewer department, as part of the capital project last year, we ordered a new sewer division van, which will allow us now to camera inspect the sewers ourselves uh, with our own staff. We just took res uh, received that van about a month ago. Uh, the staff just went through training on how to use the van properly, uh, how to use the cameras properly, and record the information. Uh, we're putting a, a plan in place to map the village out and comprehensively survey the entire village uh, to order, in order to be proactive in terms of either repairing uh, sewer mains that may need repaired or lining mains where we think we can be proactive and prevent uh, further uh, uh, breaks or anything like that. Okay. Who's doing, who's watching the camera? We have staff that's been trained on how to use the system. It records. We, we the same guys who would otherwise be laying out the roads and no. helping us get road stuff. No, no, that's we have an engineer overseeing the the project itself, not the paving engineer, but the sewer department. The, the employees in the sewer department are the ones uh, because they're the ones that have the knowledge of where the problem, you know, where they have. 
chronic problems around the village. But, 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 but like the road consultant, why wouldn't we just outsource that? We just bought it. Yeah. It, it was it was an outsourced re resource years ago. We spent I, I don't know yeah. how much money we did spend on sewer vision and inspection. I think the the idea of getting the van was a response time. B it's cheaper to have our guys just buy a van and then do our own. Yeah, that's right. correct. Yes, yeah. okay. you got me done that. Yeah, sorry. So it's cheaper to do it ourselves than to outsource. Number three is equipment. Uh, so uh, I have to do have an equipment list uh, in the uh, uh, budget book. I don't believe I have a slide for it, but uh, we are looking to replace a number of vehicles uh, dating back to 2000, 2003, 2005, 2006. It includes a 2003 garbage truck, uh, um, uh, 2003 dump truck, uh, a 2000 uh, payloader, uh, also looking to replace a 2003 street sweeper. Uh, there is some money savings from uh, this year's budget left over, and we had some payroll pricing, so we were applying that money to this year's number. So this, uh, the number you see before you is about uh, $43,000 less than the initial uh, budget number. Um, number four, sewer building repairs. So uh, this this item, there's actually two parts to this item, the building in Cherry Valley, uh, I'm sorry, the, the um, uh, Cedar Valley uh, uh, sewer pump station. Uh, the building itself uh, needs repairs. I mean, we it probably, it's a 100-year-old building and probably needs to be replaced, but Estimates were coming in at three or four million dollars to replace the building. Uh, I think we can put some money into it to repair it now to buy some buy some time for the for this building. Uh, this number also includes uh, two air conditioning units, one for each of the sewer pumping stations. If you recall, last year we upgraded the computer systems in the sewer pumping stations. We put new SCADA systems in the system. The buildings now have uh, servers in them, and last summer the servers started failing because the buildings were too hot. Um, it's basically like a, a, a computer server room. It needs air conditioning. So um, um, it's something we do to maintain uh, the, tech the technological improvements that we made to the system itself. Where is this building in? There's two of them. There's one on Meadow Street and one in Hilton Park. Okay. There's two pumping stations. <laughs> and the three million you think it may be for a building was based on what? We had an engineering firm. Uh, do an evaluation for us and prepare a proposal. What kind of building is this? <clears throat> is there now or the proposal? The proposal. Um, I don't remember what it was. It wasn't anything fancy. It's just, I mean, it's got sewer pumps in it and... and so it's not, you're not talking about just physical shell. I was going to say, you should clarify, it's all the equipment and everything. Well, the, the proposal was the sewer pumping stations can't stop working. They, they run 24-7, 365. The sewage can't stop moving. So basically, you would have to build a new building next to the existing building and then and slowly the cut over the equipment over to the new building. So it's all the electronics. All the electronics. It's equipment. It's everything. So the equipment is a, everything. Everything. It's a piping. holistic number piping. everything that runs that. Correct, okay. including yeah. tying into new pipes and not everything else. Trusty it's not just the door and, <laughs> and, steel shed. and the most expensive. <laughs> Which is where I would be in a steel shed. Yeah. Well, it could be happy, though. I mean, it's, it's a bad. I wouldn't plan to be in here. I'm not even looking at Although the one on you know on Meadow Street is in a residential neighborhood yeah. between homes, so you would probably want to. Make Although that one doesn't make it. We're building a tutor. That doesn't need to be. It's not, that's not the building we're looking to upgrade. So. Are you with falling water? Yes. <laughs> Moving on. Um, mechanic shop and lift. Uh, we have a, last year one of the lifts in the garage uh, failed. It's a, it's a major truck lift. Uh, it, it's end of life and we had to repair it. There is a sister one next to it, the same age, which is these lifts are inspected every year for safety. Um, this second lift is, is, we've been told by the inspectors that it's, it's time. It's time to be replaced. Uh, you don't want to be underneath a fully loaded garbage truck up on a lift and have the lift fail. So um, we want to invest and replace 
uh, the truck, the second truck lift in the garage. Uh, LED lighting. This this project will complete the the con all the, the conversion of all the lights in the village, uh, all the street lights. I'm sorry, all the street lights in the village to LED. Uh, and if we can also complete this leg of the project, we will qualify for the twenty-five thousand dollar grant that we were approved for uh, last year. They gave us three years to complete it. Does that include the park <coughs> lights, the lights in the parks? In the recreation, no, no, that's separate. No, that this, is, this is this is roads and parking lots. Yeah. Is that because I noticed there's some that are LED and some, right? Yeah. yeah. Does that include poles too? Well, we're. We're going to replace the poles on um, on uh, Nassau Boulevard and Stewart Avenue, uh, the wooden poles. Uh, but like for example, the lights we're, we're going to be within the next couple of months. We're going to be changing the fixtures on Franklin Avenue, but it's just the fixtures, not the poles. And Ralph, correct me if I'm wrong. By spending the money by replacing additional LED lights, we'll also be continuing to reduce down our electric bill. Correct. It's been substantial. Yeah. That, that pays for itself. Now, I, if my numbers are correct, I think now is well in excess of one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. It's basically, the gift that keeps on giving. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Are we still buying wood poles, or are we, are we just replacing them with the aluminum ones as they come down? Well, we still have some wood poles in stock, so we're using them. But uh, we, I don't, I don't remember one coming down recently. But we do have we have aluminum also. So, but Mr. Blake, it's the red ones which are going to take one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Brickwork Nassau Boulevard. So this is, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, the pre-approved funds from the Long Island Railroad for the Nassau Boulevard uh, uh, parking lot. Um, we are going out to bid for that shortly. I will be coming back to the board with the bid results, and we can discuss how we want to move forward with this project and the different options that will be available to us once we have the price. It, it, it's a net anyways, it's not even a budget issue. Correct, yeah, it's, it's below the line you'll see that there's a, 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 a reversal. You have to account for it and then correct it. No, no, I understand that, but I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's covered. Yes. Well, why is it 835 at the bottom and 142 at the top? No, it's 122. Oh, yes, on the summary page it has a... I'm looking at the actual Yeah, the book, the book has a different number, yeah. That's 1.2. Okay. Um, so, so, a quick question, just going back to the equipment. I see a couple of things here for leaf loaders. Are those the vacuum for leaves? Or are those? These are the heavy duty leaf trucks that you, the, the, the big trucks you see out. Uh, I think before we go out and spend the money, we should make a decision on what we're going to do with the collection instead of spending the money on new equipment. Understood. Um, the village on bathrooms, second, the second floor bathrooms at the yard, which are used by the street department and the sanitation department, are the original bathrooms when the building was built in 1950-something. Um, it's not functional. The stalls are actually too small for some of the guys to fit in. Um, um, the showers are very old and they do get used. So, um, so uh, we had a move on. What uh, <laughs> level of detail, John? Not sure. <laughs> 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 Who fits in the stalls? So we don't have a slide. I trust you. I have a slide if you'd like to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, village hall repointing. Uh, this is, this is a big number, but it's based on a square footage that we, we had a, 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 a masonry firm come out, give us an estimate on basically on, on a dollar amount per square foot to repoint the building. This number takes into account if we would have to repoint the entire building. Um, I'm not sure that we don't, uh, but if you've, if you've walked around the outside of the building, there's some pretty significant cracks, uh, especially on the southeast corner. Uh, there's a lot of effluent around coming out around the building. You'll see. Uh, I, I feel like this is something that needs to be done, uh, despite the cost. Is there uh, any water infiltration around? Or 
well, I mean, we've, we, I think we've, we've solved the, the roof leakage problem, but I, I, we, we do have some infiltration, I believe, in some areas, including, I think, Irene's office. Um, but, uh, but prior to the roofs that we had done, being done there were occasions where the roof would not start until the masonry was fixed because that's right. it was not. Right, yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, we had yeah. touched to the ground roof areas we were going to have to. How old was the building? It was 1953, so that was it. never been The roofs, I don't know, oh, when they were last replaced, the masonry was probably a little touched. I didn't know the, the brick yeah. the building. I'm, I'm not aware yeah. of it being here and there. Here and there, it's been yeah. spot. Yeah, I think it's just been spot, spot repairs. Hits, but never yes. fully removed. Right. I just take a walk outside. I'm just going to go on the next one. On the east yeah, side yeah. of the building, yeah. Um, uh, technology, this is replacement of um, end of life computers for people, members of the Department of Public Works. Um, um, uh, it's uh, some subscriptions we have, GIS services and licensing equipment. This is a lot of recurring uh, costs in terms of technology. Why, why do we call this capital? What's that count? Lifespan of computers, three years, tops. Software is renewable every year. I don't, I don't care what the numbers are. Why is it You know what, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I misspoke. It's 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 support for GIS the GIS system in the building. Okay. So uh, number eleven is a generator for the library. Uh, I know this is as something we've spoken about in the past. The library does not have a generator. Uh, it's actually one of the only buildings left in the village uh, that doesn't. Uh, it's been it was a request from the library board, and also I, it's something I feel that that the library needs. Um, DBW yard roof replacement. We have, uh, we're going to be completing this four roofs out of the yard over the last three years. We've replaced three of them, or we're in the process of replacing the third. This would be the last roof to be replaced at the yard. Uh, so we uh, have four new roofs down at the DBW yard, and hopefully we'll be good for the next 20 years. And we get the warranties with you, right? That's correct, yes. Uh, um, we use Firestone for the most part, um, and they come and inspect and give us a, a warranty. Excuse me? What are you scanning digitally? Uh, we have a significant number of records in the Department of Public Works, old maps, old uh, documents uh, that uh, this is part of a bigger project going on in the village. I know I know the clerk's office cameras is Ms. Saltman has been uh, uh, has a significant chunk of work to be scanned right now. Uh, we also have a, a, a this is a continuation in the building department uh, and you know, it's the village digitizing all its records. How'd you come up with the number? We actually brought the, the company in, walked him through all of our files, and he gave us an estimate proposal. What's the time frame? Well, we have to go out to bid, but. Um, the guy came in and said this would be about 150 grand, I can do it in a month? Um, oh, no. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I must have said something. I don't have the time frame, no, I don't know. Okay. Well, we bid these works together. I mean, it's in the kind of like. Buildings bid, bid, and then you guys bid. Should it be one massive bid? Is that what you mean by the price? So, no. well, go ahead. I was going to say, when, when, uh, uh, when Ozzy was here, Mr. Ward uh, and you may recall, um, in the state contract, there's a, uh, it's a, not, there's a, there's a, a convention in the state contract when it came to the scanning specifically. Uh, they want us to use, uh, I'm, I'm probably saying what was a nice city, uh, cost. They had compared to get this out. Uh, and the vendor, I think, is over here in uh, up the West Ham. We got a better bid. What happened was it was very expensive, and uh, Ms. Ware, us and I talked about it, and I said, well, bid it. And if it comes in more than 50% favorable, you can break away the state contract. So he got some very good bids, and that's how he chose his contract. His contract. Uh, Ms. Altman, the little clerk, uh, started her scanning project in this current year, and I believe this awarded a couple of weeks ago. And it turns out that the lower price happens to be nice at this time around. So we're going actually with the state vendor. Uh, so we could, uh, when uh, Mr. DeFrancisco started gearing up, we could ask him to, uh, I'm not sure if this is purchasing rules, but if you can hold that price, he's already on state contract. We can uh, package the rest. Right? Like package the rest. Yeah, just. just right. Uh, next on the list is um, Village Hall, uh, Village Hall HVAC. That would be uh, replacing uh, the air conditioning systems in this building. Um, 
the, the system is obviously very old. Uh, we spend approximately $31,000, $32,000 a year just on uh, maintenance agreements to support the, the various systems we have around the building. There's a, different units in different parts of the building. Uh, we've had uh, Donnelly Mechanical come in, survey the building, give us ideas on how to improve the system, efficiency. Uh, there's sections of the building that, that sh the air conditioning doesn't even reach. It wasn't built to reach those parts of the building. So, um, library roof. Well, well, before we get before we get to the library, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, before we get to the library, yeah. Yeah. just look at this room itself. No, no, I, look, John, I understand, but again, this is where it goes back to my point. I'm sitting here, and and we're looking at two and a half million dollars for two projects. And all I'm saying to you is that I've already had this discussion with Ralph, and basically said, and say, listen, if you really feel that the pointing is the one that makes sense. And again, why can't we do the pointing this year and do the gate back next year? I, I, I'm just throwing it out for the board to, to consider that. I, I, I'll respond to that because just like anything else, costs normally don't go down. No. And when you have things that have to be done and your cost of money is basically flat, zero, it makes no sense to wait because you're not going to not incur the cost and not have it impact somewhere down the road the tax rate, it's going to be done. You're just pushing off the decision when you're taking the risk that money may be more expensive. So that's my position. We should be getting as much done as we can, which our needs, HVAC in the library, is a need. It's not a want. We're not planting an extra tree in front of the building. I think we should be. I think we should be leaning towards getting things done because the cost of money right now is very inexpensive. I agree and, all these and, and when you, we just happen to be in a point of time. We're not. This is nobody's fault. It's nobody's. You know, for the most part, not neglect, neglect or anything like that. A building has a lifespan. An HVAC system has a lifespan. A roof has a lifespan. Yes, you can do certain things, but at certain moments of time, and in this village, many things have not been done for decades. We just happen to be at a moment of time where we have a lot of needs, like most of the country, a lot of infrastructure needs. But we happen to be lucky that money is very inexpensive. And also, when we bond things, I know we were talking about this earlier, I don't see a real downside to spreading the burden of the cost of these projects along of, you know, many years as opposed to leaving it solely on the residents right now. There are future residents that are going to get to the town. Out. Yeah. So I don't see any downside in spreading and not using all of our cash and in right effect, now you're making when they're just burdening the tax. In right effect, now. and again, yeah, nothing set in stone, I get it. Uh, and some of these things you can, should or can push off, I get it. But I don't think our mindset from day one should be pay this much in cash, I mean, what is our rate, bank rate, cash sitting in the bank? What do we get? 2%? 1 1.5%? 1.2%. 1 1 and the last time we borrowed a bond was what? Less than 1%. Okay. So it doesn't cost us anything. I agree with, well, that, I agree with Trustee Donnie. Um, I served on a board for 12 years that spent almost that entire 12 years trying to catch up with needs that were delayed one, two, three, five years. And, and you were faced with major, major amounts of bonds at the time that only brought us up to par. It didn't put us over the edge, it didn't plan for the future, our hands were tied in, in budgeting for other items. So I'm hearing this board has spent six to eight years trying to catch up and now we have a list of needs and they're legitimate needs. And given the price of how to borrow money, it doesn't mean we don't look at budgets. It doesn't mean we don't question what's going on. It doesn't mean, although we should probably do a little faster with 17 items and we're on Department 1, but <laughs> just saying, I just think that um, to defer something, just because you have two items and you want to defer something to another time, when it's a need, when it's a want, like the HVAC at the library, I've heard that that's actually broken. Several There's times. a couple things on here that are, that are, need, that are not yeah. wants, they're needs. 
I agree. And I agree. Get them done now. We need to do them. I just want to get them done now. It's not a good place. I have no problem with the exercise of it. It makes sense. You go to the other side. But if you, again, partly I get into philosophy, it's people's taste or whatever. But again, if you start with this, forget the rough numbers, but 15 million of which nine will bond, but six will use cash or whatever it was. You are in effect making the tax effect right now higher because that money you're not bonding is coming from somewhere. Either it's being taxed or you're not doing something. So, I agree. Well, let me, if I can, let me give the other side of that coin. I agree with you right now, my nice chief. I'm in the finance industry. I understand. The problem is, principal plus interest payments. That's the problem. So let's just do simple, let me finish. Let's just do simple math. Right now, 6% of our budget is principal plus interest payments. Now, if we continue to bond at the rate that we have bonded for the last several years, the difference is in the last six years, we have been able to offset that and have been able to utilize debt, which I've been 100% in favor of, because we were able to find as I said before, deficiencies and reductions of employees. That's how we've been able to adjust it. As the presentation was shown a month ago, if we continue to bond at the rate that we bond, in six years, 12% of our budget will be principal plus interest. I don't care if they give it to us at a quarter of 1%. The bottom line is, is that when you look at the amount of debt of the village, it will be at 12% of your budget. And whether you realize this or not, there will always be a need. If you said to me today, Bob, let's sit here and let's bond $30 million worth of stuff, but we will sign a piece of paper that for the next five years, we're not going to bond anything except for in cash. I signed on the piece of paper today. But the problem is, is that we all know that in a village this size, there will always be needs. And to one last point, to what Trustee Minuto said, is the aspect of why are we making the bonds so cheap? Because the bottom line is that people are getting all free. That's not the case. Look, I've lived here since 95. Many of you may be very lived here long. We all know stuff always happens in a village this size. So people are always paying. If we're not paying for the roads, we're paying for the library. If we're not paying for the library, we're paying for DPW. If we're not paying for DPW, we're paying for the fire department. So all I'm saying to you is this board, and again, I'm one vote out of eight, and I have a very strong opinion about it, which is fine. But the bottom line is, is that this is not an opinion. This is math. This is who gave the presentation. It's math. So again, if we choose that we want to do that, that's fine. But in six years, our principal plus interest is going to be 12% of our budget. And as that number gets bigger, what it does is it reduces the financial flexibility of this village, and what it does is it increases the overall debt of the village. And when you have things like the water, the firehouse, and potentially considering, which some trustees here have said, absolutely, we'd like to do something with St. Paul's, when you start to add those numbers and continue to bond at the rate we have for the six years, you're looking at overall debt of this village that could exceed $150 million. And we're at $54 million. So again, each one of us can decide. And again, there's always things we can write here, and you can make a justification for everything on the list. All I'm saying to you is, is that, guys, it's not my opinion. It's math. So if we sit there and we, bond, and we bond $6 million, or we bond $9 million, anything that's over $3 million will increase the total amount of principal plus interest. That's all I'm saying. So before you, you vote for something and you say, absolutely we need to do it, like I said, it's not my opinion, it's, it's not my style, it's math. That's all it is. The only point that I'll make is, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, if we're looking at projects that we have next year, how much lower will rates go? Are the chances are that rates will go lower or higher in the next year? And, and so if we were to bring projects forward by a year, and, and reap the benefits of having a lower interest cost, and I would be in favor of any projects in the program. I would also offer to support that <coughs> that costs always go up. So it will never be as cheap to do these projects as right now. 
period. Regardless of what we extrapolate, and then it's going to be 100 years of debt or whatever. What, what it is will the never be this cheap. The choice is not that. A lot of other villages have said that, and they're in a horrible paying, shape right now. Or paying, um, how much did you say the age factor in this building every year for maintenance? $30,000. $30,000 is just preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance. Not repairs. That's right. 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 It's insane. How much are repairs? It varies from year to year. We've had some bad years where we've had to do uh, some major repairs, $100,000 worth. I mean, is, is it, can we talk about what? How many, just burn my <coughs> how, many, how many units are within this facility? Is it one, one main unit? No. There's Well, there is one main unit, but there's also smaller units in the court. Uh, there's smaller units in the okay. police department. So, so this money here that you're proposing is for all of them, or is it just for? This would replace the, the majority of the systems in this building. There are some smaller split systems in the fire department, which we would leave. Uh, but is that what you're done? Yeah, correct. Right. right. And right. <clears throat> but the library is the same way? Is it like five units? Is it one main unit? No, the library is one That's main unit. That's probably a comprehensive yeah. system. Yeah. This was added on to over time. Yeah. Right. 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 Is it, are we looking to make the process more efficient by replacing five units with one unit? Yes, I mean, like the unit, for example, the unit, the, the, the unit, unit. If you allow me a second, it's right. deeper than that, too, especially with HAC now. The chemicals we're using are probably, can you even get them anymore? Or you have to get them from the place. Yeah. Like, you know, like everything's so far outdated, we're, we're not compliant with those anymore. The unit that's in the court right now is in, is in a closet up actually up here on the, on the second floor. And when the when I brought the uh, gentleman around to kind of give us an evaluation of the system, when he saw it, he he said, "Wow!" He goes, "When you when you uh, decommissioned this unit, I want to put it in our museum." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, true story. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> you know, three to four times the amount. Not a good probably save money on those. I'm sure I was going to ask you too if yeah. there's any lead credits or anything we would get from mm -hmm. an update. But also, some yeah. grant money, anything like that, if we could look into it. Would you start with but also, we'll also get modern control right now. Yeah. The two to honor is off and it's called. You know, it's, it's very yeah, hard to be modulate. It doesn't look at the outside temperature every much time. So. What do you think about this? Yeah. Um, the library roof. Uh, the library roof is 26 years old. Um, the warranty for the roof expired back in 2011. Uh, and we actually do have money in a capital fund uh, from a previous library roof project, which we can apply to this project. So, um, and, and, and have we looked at all the building and putting solar panels on the roof of the library? I have not, but I can pursue that. I, was concentrating more on just fixing the roof, but, but I mean, obviously, you have to fix the roof first, but correct. Right. It would make sense at that point maybe to consider uh, maybe the solar panels on the roof. So, this project was on the folks back when I got here, and was there a few. Yeah, so we took it off because it was built, it was put into the budget then, uh, not, not being critical, but the lifespan of the roof was 20 years, so it was at the 20 year point around 2011. So, but it was still functioning well. Our engineers were on the roof. They had patched areas, so it wasn't really it didn't need fully replaced. We're kind of pushing now 26 years. So I think if we put a roof on there, the solar panels would be in addition to that bronze. We need the roof either way. Okay. Uh, the village hall, thank you for upgrade. This, if you recall, uh, uh, I think it was last year or the year before, we installed four air conditioning units in the hallway downstairs in the fire department. There was three, four rooms and. Three of them were fire department rooms, and the fourth one, geographically, they're all in a row, is the detective's room. All four of those units are on the same compressor system. Uh, they're split system units, heat and air conditioning. Um, the, we discovered that the, the police department have different needs for the system at different times of the year. The police department, because of their equipment and other things, um, they're not able to separate the usage of the system from what the fire department uses the system for. So we need to break out a separate compressor for the police department so that the fire department can operate the system heat in the winter versus the police department who still might run the air conditioning unit. In addition, the detective's room has an air conditioner in the window which we would like to remove uh, and protect that room because that is uh, a room that needs protecting. What time do you make for you talking about? For something like that? 
it's actually a, a, the unit is the split system is actually in. It's a compressed a new uh, an additional compressor for that unit. So and it goes on with installation, prevailing wage, and it goes on the roof. Seventy three thousand. Seventy nine. Uh, Seventy three. No, you're right. Seventy three. Yeah. But that's that. No, that that does need to be bid out, so it, it could come in lower than that. Uh, and lastly, uh, village hall garage doors. This refers to the building behind village hall. Uh, back here, there's 12 garage doors back there, which are old. We're constantly repairing them. Uh, and I think they're very old wooden doors. I think uh, we can uh, replace those doors for with much more lightweight uh, aluminum doors. And it would look nicer. What about the building? What? what? That's not. Are those garages worth anything? So, 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 so my initial, my initial uh, uh, idea was to actually uh, uh, get rid of the entire building back there and build a much more modern um, climate-controlled storage facility because really that building is used mostly for storage. Steel shed for for <laughs> for um, this building. The supplies for this building. Uh, other departments, police department, fire department, use that really more for storage. It's not really used for parking of vehicles, other than maybe trailers uh, and stuff like that. And then really just extend a covering or a breezeway for cars to park underneath. Um, but again, we're talking about another building. Um, so um, I can quickly and, and, and much more cost efficiently replace the garage doors rather than tearing down that building and building a new building, which um, in terms of so the, the use of the building is obviously where you today. So, so again, we're trying to make, we're trying to make the functions of the locked doors. So there really isn't what we need. We do need climate control uh, storage facilities, and we do need to segregate. There's no walls between the fire department stores and the police department stores in some cases. Uh, and the carport would offer protection and, and lighting and, uh, for the majority of the car. So this could be. Uh, Walk ball for a while and we, and we That's for next year. Yeah, this can be brought to two or three years down the road. I mean, you know, a new building, the demolition in a new building, you're talking about, I don't know, another, what do you think you said, eight million dollars? Half that. I mean, you could probably put a prefab building in there. Yeah. Maybe you can make prefab buildings a spare kit and just have it. Money's cheap. Do it. I think you should see how you're trying to get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting. This is an interesting topic because you're spending 120 or it's going to be more than that. You know, know that. It always ends up being more than that. And uh, what's the point? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think we still figure out what we're going to do. It's still just kind of hundred twenty thousand. If if in three years we're sitting here and we say, yeah, God, you know, just knock the thing down. We need to restart your building. I agree. <laughs> Well, it is, it is 17 yeah. on my list of priorities. So Actually, one, one <laughs> <has action. laughs> Yeah, because that was because you made it doors. I'm asking you the actual function and needs. Is it really something completely different? It's not really doors. The doors is a band-aid. It's, it's a band-aid to make the buildings a little bit more functional than they are now. Uh, I, know, I know the building department has the, the, the uh, records in that building that they're, they're pulling, that they're distributing. It, it just, they need to be protected better. The, the doors are, we're repairing them frequently. Besides this, besides this 121 for the doors, there is a capital project from this year. I think it's approximately $40,000 for the junior fireman uh, construction on the end. So if we would do this 121, we would also do the 40, but that's 161. So if you put that against the new building, to accommodate that same junior fireman's room and a much more modern room that's built for them along the storage and the carport. I'd rather push this off to next year myself. But we, we didn't have time for the flush now. But we know you need doors, but. Yeah, Joe, what's the shape of the rest of the structure? I mean, the roof and the brakes? The roof is not, I mean, you can look outside and, and the roof needs to work and needs a roof. Um, So we'll put new garage doors on a, on a building that needs a roof and brakes. 
point yeah. to the end. And we can, like I said, we can push this out a few years and, and put it in a building, put it in a structure. Um, I, I tell you, I would rather do the not get that funded. Let's get a prefab price and maybe we do it next year. Well, why don't you look at a prefab pre price in the next week or so? Just get an idea what it would cost by Friday. <laughs> So hold on, so you're pushing out the library eight back to next year at best. Was is that the decision? The library? Pushing back what? Eight back the next year. Why? Do with this year. No, I would. I'm asking the question. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't push that back. I wouldn't push the library. It's on this year. It's on this year. No, sir. It's on 22. No, it's 22. It's next year. It's next year. I'm sorry, the library track. The library track is, is I'm sorry, I, it's scheduled for next year. Oh. Is it because oh, you already oh, oh, is it because you have to do the roof first and then you have to the roof needs to be done first. And, and, and also I, I felt we were doing the little trolley track this year. Next year. Next year? Yeah. Why does it get to next year? If you're doing the roof before you do the HAC, that seems bad sacrifice. What if you need curbs? What if you need different things? Move for the new system, you're going to tear up the roof you just put down? Yeah, that's a small size. I, 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 I can see doing it at the same time. Uh, I, I honestly assume they would be doing it. Okay. Yeah. You guys got the cool name on that one. So, do we move the roof out yeah, or we call it the air conditioning? Air conditioning. Yeah, bring you and pay for it. I mean, moving can you can easily get, let's just say, Don Lee over there, and they would tell you, no, this is the way you should do it. You do it at the same time, or you do the AC this first, then the roof. You really, you really don't do the AC. Sorry. Yeah, you can't. It doesn't make so, sense. so the plan is to pull the AC into this coming year, or push the roof out to the following year? Yeah, you have to do them at the same time. I, I don't, if, I'm in, you know, you tell me what's the worst. If you're How bad is the roof? Why did the point to be pointing well, the next year shall be? Can the roof last the another year? Can the roof last another year and do it next year? Um, do both at yeah, the same time. Uh, I'm sure we can. How about you do this? Why don't you assess? I think the pointing is a good call out to assess which one should move back and forth between now and five. Well, you don't have to answer right now because you should make an educated decision. All right, so we're looking at the, the three items is the, the repointing of Village Hall, the library roof, and the library aid track. Those yeah. are the three items. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't do them out of sequence just so it looks good, like, you know, year to year budget. you gotta, you got to figure that out. And don't they have another renovation being? Right, but if you got guys there, you got guys there. Might as well be part of the project. I know that's my personal opinion, but. I know it's two different things, but if you're going to disrupt the library, if you're going to have people starting up, if you're going to have you know guys working there, I don't know. You say do all work at the same time, so you don't have it in different stages. But how big is the library roof? Very big. It's all very big. At the end of its life expectancy. In other words, you're not going to be repairing this roof. You're going to take it away and put it in the ground. That's drying out essentially. They didn't have the engineer look at it. It's it's. It's it's stretching out. It's it's failing. It's, it's old. So you're not going to just spot the air every. You're going to put it. Well, in the I mean, we could if we had to, but that's that, that, really want to move. that seems to be throwing good money after bad. So. You should be able to get that answer before we have to pass on this budget. Mr. Romani. Are we allowed to ask any questions? Really? Uh, a couple of things on the paving. I, I didn't see, and I know it's been discussed in the past, is uh, Commercial Avenue east of uh, Clinton Road. And as well as, I know we were waiting for the National Grid Project to be done. Um, but the uh, sidewalks on the south side of Stewart from Clinton to the east line. 
Are those two things? Those those, those are uh, PSE and G is using that area for staging. Yes. Uh, so we're going to wait for them to to uh, finish up, uh, and then that the sidewalks on that area are slated. The, the, the money's already been budgeted. That was in last year's budget to be done. Okay. I didn't want to put in brand new sidewalks in the PSE. No, I just said that. I didn't see it on the pending side from you know. The side it, it's, already, from the it's, it's already it's already in the plan. It's already okay. from last year. And um, the roads that you do plan on repaving, are you going to be using that new sewer truck to check those sewers so we don't end up tearing up streets we just paved? That's yes, that's absolute plan. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, can I make a yeah. Okay, I'm Randy Cohen, I'm the chair of the library board, four years now, I have to remember, I was here in this room in 2012, we talked about the roof, and we talked about temporary repair, and we, did, we repaired it, I think we put some sort of sealant on it at the time, um, have we, I think it's long past its life, I think we're lucky, another year, we'll hopefully be lucky again, although we do have leaks in different parts of the library from time to time, and don't know the sources. My opinion is it's, uh, you know, we have a short time frame. Right? This is why the engineer will evaluate the roof and get us done. I think that's a pretty good plan. Don't you? I just want to say, you shouldn't answer it. Let me figure out what you're going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. If we don't have, is it in your budget? I'm just like, a little where would you normally put like this bathroom? So the bathroom downstairs. That would be a big deal. Yeah. That's not it. Do we have to tell anybody to tell this this money from prior years that were allocated is probably not sufficient. One of the things we um, we've asked and nothing's happened yet, the person who just did the library bathrooms came out at a very good price and we actually not only budget the work he did with the way he staged his work on site. Um, the engineer who um, oversaw that work wasn't in yesterday today, but when he's in tomorrow, I'm going to ask him to have that person come down here. And now we look at each of the bathrooms that's building the court, the public bathrooms downstairs, and the men's only rooms in the back offices to show him what they look like and get some ideas about what remodeling the building bathrooms could be like to get an automatic number. And then and now March 26th, we'll have a number of days on <coughs> substitute garage dollars. Or and I think we all generally like to get bathrooms redone, if nothing else. But I invite any of you to go look at that bathroom. And there's another one, two other ones just like it. They haven't been touched since the building was built. <laughs> there's actually seven. And the public uses this one, uh, this one only, these two. One's Not the one here. One's downstairs. The public uses this one. One well, those were redone. One was redone. Yeah. But they need modern plumbing fixtures, new lighting, uh, probably new partitions. Uh, there's a question about do we reglaze the tile, rip them out. This, you know, you get really expensive if you start demolishing. So we haven't gotten to that. Yes. Sorry, just a quick question. Um, there's been a few references to prior year projects that there's money left. Is there a list anywhere of all these projects from past years that still have money and whether they are going to be completed or not going to be completed? Yes. So, so, so a list, yes, the list does exist. Uh, we have our intention of finishing the projects that this money was allocated for. Um, I, I don't have the list with me, but yes. Some of the projects that we talk about, all the projects that, like in the case of the library, <coughs> over, that might have been a $100,000 project, they used forty-seven dollars So there's $60,000 left in a repair project. Now we can close it down and re budget the way, or we can put it toward the roof project. So some people, six of one, that does another. Uh, projects that we're in the middle of doing, we, we estimate the garage shows to be 1.1. They could have been 104, and that 17000 goes back to. If it was bonded, it's bonded or back to reserve if it was cash. So sometimes the money's not out there. So we can do the job. Okay. <coughs> By the way, Ralph, nice job with the signs. Oh, the signs look very good. They really do. They're good. You know, one thing that I'm struck with this evening is that I don't know the name, names 
of all of the members of the CBRAC who are with us this evening. I was wondering if you would introduce yourselves to the audience and to the board so that we could know you. So we'll start with Rosario. Rosario Palanti from Central. Good. Uh, Shane Pomeroy from the East. Tom Wolf from the West. Well, welcome. Good having you here tonight. <laughs> so next up is uh, the library. Okay, it does anyone have, have one have a further question? Yes. I'm oh, sorry, it's my first meeting here. Just one silly quick question. I saw 140,000 for document scanning. Is that just, and, and if this were the prior meeting, I apologize, I missed it, but is that just because there's so many documents to scan? Or, or they just yes, there is. It's, 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 it's also the size of the documents. We have very large maps. Basically, 100 years worth of documents. I was going to say it's, a, it's part of a larger archiving project. <laughs> and to make everything available. Hopefully it'll be available for your own computer. Okay. Okay. Good evening, Madam Mayor and uh, Board of Trustees. Thank you for your time tonight. Um, most of you know me, uh, Marion Malagon, I'm the Library Director. I'm also here with uh, our Chairman, Randy Colahan, behind me, and um, presenting on behalf of the Library Board and myself on the capital projects for this coming year. Um, I definitely want to offer my sincere thanks to Irene and Garcia, to Ralph, and to um, Joe and many other department heads who assisted me on the related projects that I'll be discussing tonight. Um, first of all, during uh, the past uh, calendar year, we have um, seen our uh, bathroom project was completed with a great deal of assistance from uh, DPW that was um, to create a ADA compliant and uh, family bathroom on the main level near the children's department. And the two adjacent bathrooms were also upgraded in a similar style. Um, it's been a big success and, and well received by the public. And um, one of the technology projects that we completed in the past year, uh, which was both a security and a quality of life um, enhancement, I'd say, is um, that we installed a cell phone booster antenna on our roof, which then has uh, receivers downstairs uh, in the lower level, so that now people can receive phone calls and texts. And that's important for security, uh, convenience, and even things like um, when people sometimes have to log into an account online in the computer lab, and they get a code from their bank or whatever, and they need to be able to receive that message. So it has all kinds of applications, um, but mainly for security, we're very glad that we uh, now can offer that for our patrons. Um, we do have some other uh, projects that are from the 2019-20 year uh, still in process, so uh, funds that may have appeared to be available are actually in purchase orders, such as uh, our server virtualization project. Uh, that's a large uh, capital project for our IT department so that we can uh, virtualize our servers similar to what they're doing in administration here at Village Hall. Um, and uh, we have been working uh, closely with uh, Village Administrator Swazi and the purchasing department on our voice over IP phone system, uh, which we look forward to implementing very soon. Um, for this year, we mainly have uh, three projects that we've prioritized. Um, uh, I joked with um, Mrs. Wu about uh, the challenge of trying to prioritize these projects because technology kind of runs through it all, and so does security. Um, but I did rank our children's room as our number one priority for this year. Um, the children's room hasn't been modified since the library opened 45 years ago, and as I'm sure you're all aware, uh, times have changed in uh, early uh, reading activities and literacy activities for children. Um, it's not just our reading center or a place for books. We now have media products and we have all kinds of programs in the library space. Um, people are reading to their uh, young children at a very young age and we need spaces that accommodate all of these kinds of readers uh, in our department. So it's time for um, an upgrade which would not just be cosmetic but would also improve the quality of the function and programs in the library. 
Um, our staff have increased library programs this year despite not being able to enhance the space or significantly grow our program budget or our uh, staffing budget. Uh, they've added drop-in programs that are held right in that main library space and they've also hosted programs by outside providers so that we can increase the number of early childhood programs to meet or to try to approach demand. We are certainly not meeting the demand from the community. So we're just trying to improve our quality of our programs and services. Um, to that end, um, I've worked over the course of the past year with four different architects or architectural firms to obtain design proposals and um, uh, consultation with them about the kinds of services and improvements we could make to the children's room. Um, we would be just making modifications to the interior space within that department although it's possible depending on the final plan the library chooses that we might modify the circulation or front checkout space at the front uh, or possibly the library's boardroom in the administration department which is adjacent might be folded into the children's room so uh, we may have additional space available for either of those pickups but at this time uh, despite having met with four architects and having had demonstrations, um, sorry, presentations by two of them, um, we have not settled on a plan that meets my or the library board's uh, aspirations. Uh, they both had qualities we liked, and they both had qualities that we felt needed improvement. And so um, we did, however, come up with a fairly good cost estimate. So um, at the time that I prepared the budget table that went into the budget book, and that you see at the top of your slide, we were working with a smaller estimate in the neighborhood of $375,000. Um, the library has a deferred revenue account. Um, about $25,000 of that has been appropriated to our contracted services line so that we could engage the architects that we've been working with. Uh, the remaining $130,000 would be added to that, would have been added to that two forty-five dollars you see there to approach the two three seventy-five dollars mark. However, we had uh, presentations on both February 24th and last night, March 9th, um, at the first presentation, uh, in addition to our liaison, Trustee Foley, who I also want to thank personally for her assistance. Um, and we also had um, Village Administrator Swazi and um, Superintendent DeFrancisco. And I met separately with Superintendent Giovanello and one of the architects as well. Um, so they all attended that first session, and then last night we had an updated session where they took a closer number at the numbers, I'm sorry, a closer look at the numbers. We wanted to make sure that we were accounting for an appropriate amount of contingency for the technology that we would need in order to be able to incorporate early learning of uh, STEM activities and uh, really an updated um, application of children's services programs in the library. And um, we also discussed having a construction manager. So um, in the paragraph, the key highlights paragraph that I marked for children's room on the slide, we, at the time that Irene and I were working on the slides, we estimated that 650,000 project total. But as of last night's meeting, we're a little more comfortable with a $700,000 figure for that. Uh, if you decrease the amount um, that we have in our deferred revenue, that leaves our request at $570,000 for that project from the village. Um, I also want to further add that because I've been advocating so hard for the need in this department, we've been uh, received generous uh, SAM grant nominations from Assemblyman Ed Roth for $50,000 and from Senator Kevin Thomas for $150,000. Those funds can only be used for qualified expenses um, they have to be related to construction, demolition, and some uh, professional uh, services costs. Um, they um, have to, um, we have to have a secured uh, ex demonstration of, or reasonable expectation of total project funding, and we cannot use it towards technology such as computer, laptops, tablets, and smart boards, uh, furniture, or security cameras. So the SAM grant funding is tied to uh, pretty much a construction-related expense. Um, while we are looking at interior designs, both of the architects that we last met with demonstrated uh, options for us that included 
say, modifying one of the walls to the story room and replacing it with a folding glass wall so that that story hour room would be able to be opened during busy hours of the day, maybe on a Sunday afternoon when families were in the library, so they could sit on, in the space and, and there and be as well. But we could also use that as a programming space and open it up into the room for larger groups. So therein uh, is a certain level of construction that might afford us the opportunity to take advantage of the uh, construction costs. Um, I'm sorry, the benefit of the grants to apply towards the construction costs. Yes? But my simple mind, let's simplify. Sure. Let's assume we have $2 million of construction work we want to do in life. How much in grant money do you have available? It's more than two million, isn't it? Because you had 150 sitting in the last year. So uh, these all have uh, slightly different uh, terminology, so I'll just be specific. We have a deferred revenue account. That's the specific name that uh, the finance department and that the library board and myself use for it. Uh, that money is a compilation of monies received. It's called bullet aid or legislative aid. It was $155,000 at approximately the start of this year. Um, it was 145 during last budget session, and we received an additional 10,000 from Senator Kevin Thomas, and that check came early in the year. So you have that plus you have 200,000 from Thomas for if you use it for construction. It's 150 from Thomas and uh, 50 from Ra. So 200,000. But those that is not cash on hand. That's a reimbursable. No, we, we okay. Assume, let's let's assume, assume. Sure. All the grant money was usable okay. today in some form or another. What's that dollar amount? Total. Okay. It is 330000 not counting. We have some money that is in our contracted service. We took 25 and put it in contracted services to pay architects. Okay. Not all of that money has been spent. Okay. Does that include these new grants? Okay, what they call Yes. 330 in grants. 155 or 145 that was sitting there last year. And that includes money that you had gotten from... Through so, wait a second. so he's asking, is the 130 and the 155 two separate accounts? No, the 130 and the 155 is, so last year, this time last year, I sat here, I had 145,000 in deferred revenue. How much then do you have now? We still have about the whole, if I don't, I haven't PO'd anything yet, so I still have 155,000. But I have signed agreements with H2M to pay them for the services that they've done so, so far. Proposals. But some of it's spent. Some of it is allocated. Uh, approximately how much? Approximately thirteen thousand plus there may be a bill that I haven't. Okay, received so yet. you have about one hundred forty-five thousand, one hundred forty-two thousand left. Correct. Okay. Right. Now, some of which is in the operating account, yeah. and the rest is so right. Good. I'm just to okay, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not misleading <laughs> yeah, in the information. I, I don't know why all of a sudden. We'll okay. find out in three months from now there was another grant no. of 220 that no one kind of figured out. No. Right. Okay. So I, I applaud that everyone's trying to make the library a better place. I, I get it. I like it. I just want to, I need to understand what's the end result, right? I mean, is the better plan to do A, B, and C, or is it to do, you know, GHI? I, and I guess I, I'm curious. Do any of these plans kind of reconfigure, I know we're talking about the children's space, but that's just one portion of the front four and maybe some in the back. What about the circulation desk? What about, you know, we always talk about security and we're worried and blah, blah, blah. We have 123 cameras in the building. Yeah. Can we? Yeah, I know. I was being facetious because it's only 57. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we looking at this holistically? And saying, you know what, we're worried mostly about kids and kids use and security for kids, blah blah blah. Why not everything to do with kids on the first floor, move anything to do with adults the second floor, get I'm just making this up. Get rid of DVDs, because who the heck is using DVDs and you know CDs, whatever it is, and really look at this. Holistically, you know? And I know that's a lot more money. I get it, I get it. 
right? Like, I hate to spend $700,000 and really only do sort of half can of what we're thinking should be done. Can I make a suggestion? I, I've talked to Colleen a little bit about it, too. I think to get the maximum like kind of bang for your buck, mm -hmm. I think you should also conceptualize it. I know you're going purely to architects. Um, but I, I really do think you benefit more from an interior uh, professional than, than you even would an architect. Because I think from walking in and experiencing the library, um, to, to, to uh, Trustee Donnie's point, really looking at spatial improvements, picking you know, fabrics, furniture, you know, that looks new, fresh, lighting, which is so important. I think you should really focus on that. I think you can have a project architect to watch the time, the schedule, and the budget. But I really do think you benefit from getting someone who's, who's really more an interior professional. My own point of view, you can, you can volley back what you will, but I think... I, can, um, I appreciate your opinion on that. Um, the two proposals we had just yesterday, varied a great deal and one of them was much more of an interior design focus. Um, again, we didn't settle on either plan as a preferred choice. However, um, I definitely can see the benefit of using color and form and uh, a plan for how people use the space and walk into a room. Uh, there's a sense of these things and I would feel very strongly that we want to have some kind of an interior yeah. design so plan point, but it's just, a question of the professional the library, library. just like instead of a blue carpet it's blue gray right. you know I mean? <laughs> and everything's in the same spot just slightly updated that would be you know that would be unfortunate you really right. I think you really want to uh, take a hard look at it and get the maximum amount of so, so pulling in what both of you have said, um, and the fact that uh, you know I'm, I'm taking all of this in from the fact that we have a space study that was done in the neighborhood five years ago by one of the architects who actually presented yesterday, and she did present a design for the whole library. And prior to my coming here, it was decided not to necessarily proceed with the entire plan, but they had the children's plan sort of ready to go when I came in the door. And it was basically a punch list of furniture, carpet, paint, and a couple, you know, a couple of minor things for about $150,000. And in 2018, I said, I don't want to spend $150,000 on this furniture, carpet, paint plan because it's going to essentially be the same library with a fresh coat of paint on it. And I don't think that's what this village deserves after 45 years of not changing the children's room. So then we came to where we were a year ago, and I said that, and everybody said. So get going on this project. And I focused on the children's room because I thought it would be the most efficient path forward. Take a space that we know means the most work. Focus on what's in its best interest, whether it is architectural change or just interior change. And I examined both sides of this. And where, like I said, where we came to yesterday is we've got numbers we like. Like I said, a little more like 700 than 650. But we just don't have the right plans. You know, just like shopping for anything, you're, you know, that's really important to you. You gotta get, you want to get. If people are gonna spend this money, I think the village and the, and the kids of this community deserve the right library for the price. So I'm, I'm with you either way. I yeah, just didn't I, I, I wasn't saying you know, I what I suggested to, has yeah. to mean anything. I was just sort of like, if you spend, forget the, almost forget the money. If, right. With this, either of these plans, is this what the children section should be? Or is it not really? doing much, to Lewis's point. Is it really... So you know? I, I think that the trick is that where the children's department is, it's kind of tied in between a couple of spaces that you can't really move, two exterior walls and, and a surf desk, to, and plumbing. And to start really drastically changing the size of that department is really going to be much bigger dollars. And uh, to your point, I agree with you that, and I should say, going back to three steps, that part of the circulation department was we included in both of those plans yesterday. They changed the desk, they changed the carpeting so that it matches and there's a better flow. So in general, it would cover that main aisle and, the, and then over. But um, I see what you're saying about you know the efficiency of doing the bigger picture. And I have not personally studied that since I've been here. I've just been trying to execute, you know, you have this money, don't sit on the money. What can you do with that money? And when I took that money and went to the four architects, they all said, 
not much. You can do that, you can do more if you spend a little more. And so this is where we are now. I know that the SAM grant funds are dated and that there are timelines, which I don't have with me, having to do with when you start and end a project, whether those funds can be applied. And I know that there's concern among the village board that the 130 to $255,000 in that other account be used soon. And I just want to do the right thing for the library. So I've been pressing to try to get a plan together that we would all love. Um, just to add, um, you and I have talked as well as the library board have met on a regular basis. And I think that the area that you're in can fulfill the need of what you envision the children to be. But the, you're constrained with things from literally 30 years ago. Antiquated bookshelves, antiquated seating. Um, antiquated big giant desks so it's stuff to get a stroller through. Um, I just recently spoke, I was recently as a couple of hours ago, spoke to Chairman Colohan about being a little bit, um, the library board being a little bit more open to the movement of space. So I think the two that presented kind of landed in, in an area that you can do a lot with that money. I agree. And then you can probably grow. And the fact that you've landed 200,000 in SAM grants plus the money you have, reduces that project down to a 370 number or approximate. Uh, so I, th I think you can do a lot with that space. The, the area to answer your question, like the circulation desk and making it a little bit more modern is a bigger question in technology. So if the circulation desks were made smaller, which is what most libraries are doing, they don't have the big 35 foot desks anymore, they're more like five feet desks. Correct. But the technology that supports that that's an item that's not in this project that may want to be considered. And that also requires the manpower in the library to upgrade. You're on a magnet system now, and I learned last night there's a, another system which is better and more efficient and would lend you stats and numbers of how your materials flow that you don't have now. But that technology is probably a couple hundred thousand more <coughs> in the project. It's, it's about 100000 just purely for the technology before you count the labor. We're talking about oh, RFID so checkout, check out, like where you can take a whole stack of books to check out, put them down on a pad, and you know, scan your library card and walk out the door. You don't have to scan them one at a time like you do at Stop and Shop or your favorite grocery right. store. And the, 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 the kiosks are mobile, so they can move around the circulation area, which is, again, the technology. You're, they're in a library where people have to take down cords to extend on carpet that smells. Hmm. And that's it's well, so, I don't want to be right, but that's where we are. You guys know better than I. I'm just trying to think out of the box here because we're all spending our that's money, right? I mean, if you if we said 700 is plausible or 300 is plausible, whatever the number is, is that money at the moment you better spend doing something else. Like again, get rid of the CD room and make it into something better, and then next year come back with a fully baked plan about how you change the children's room. I, I don't know. To that point, I think it's a process. These guys got to go through. They're just at the preliminary stage with a couple architects trying to get a sense of what they want to do. Then I think you really have to sit down, operationally look at the adjacencies and say, are there improvements, technologies can make this room obsolete, or this desk smaller, or this, you know, right now the tweens are next to the the kids' rooms and they're, you know, that's that's a bad combo for whatever reason. You know, you have to really, I think they're at the beginning of the process. I think you have to go through it and really put together the best, the best plan you can. I think we're all saying the same thing, which is do the homework and then, you know, don't take such a long time that you lose those grants though, right? Because isn't that like you use it or lose it, right? Yeah, uh, that is the case. I think so there is a so time run. So the the clock's running. Right. Well, right. So, so let's do but So we'll let's just make up a value. If the 300 in grants was going to expire, let's say, you know, next January. Yeah. Okay, obviously, you're crazy not to grab it and do something with it. You couldn't get a fully baked plan as to a redo as a budget. Yeah, they won them. What is what's plan B yeah. to get yeah. at least use that three hundred grand? I wouldn't say I plan B. I would well, say make it a really cumulative is. phase plan, phase one, phase two. Which is kind yeah. of what they've attempted to do. And, yeah. and this plan that you're going to go back to additional architects is going back with that in mind. Mm -hmm. But if you think of the building, there's almost a natural split in, in the children's area. There is nothing above that, whereas in the other areas there's a second floor. And you have many more departments that also have 
needs like the children's area. Sure. So this is a good place to start with phase one. Absolutely. And then in, and, and know that when you design it, that it's going to flow into the other phases. Right. Like renovating the downstairs area and what that becomes versus what it is now. There right. are very few places that just have 30 computers laid out in a room. Sure. And as far as even that specific AV room, I thought I did talk with the board about trying to um, fold the media room into part of this, like make this a two-pronged project where we would, because I can easily foresee weeding the collection upstairs and bringing the media items we do have up to an upper floor, and then we would turn that other space into potentially another school meeting room or conference room or something like that, so that we have, because we do have too much demand also for our meeting space, whether it's for programs or for community groups. So, but oh, we didn't put that into this part of the project because this is really the priority, the children's room and the front. And if we change that desk, it really will change the feel when you walk in. It will make it easier for security. There's a lot of things that will benefit us. And, and as Trustee Foley said, I really think you can't go halfway on this because when we got to halfway, it still looked too much like the old plan that was $150,000. However, I do really think we'll have something to show for ourselves with this larger sum of money, and like I said, with the grants all included, without doing some part of it as construction, and I'm just back to cosmetic, then I can't even use the grant funds. Right. So I do think that other room is it's right on the tip of my tongue as the next thing I want to do, but honestly, we can probably just pull out the shelving, put down some inexpensive floor, we can maybe find some other way to work something out with you know DPW or something, as a separate thing. I'm not going to worry about that. I was going to say, I think a phased plan is the best way. And, yeah. and, and approach it that way with the architects. Right. So there could be a kind of master plan. Yes. It may take a while to get to. And then you can do in consumable chunks. Sure. And then that way you don't lose anything or you have to double back on anything that you Right. And so that's a good point because both architects commented on some of the HVAC in the pocket areas yeah. out in the children's. Yes. So that's something you don't want to do. We don't want to do HVAC and roof and then find out you should have done something else over there. And so to right. your point about right. tagging it all together. Yeah. Right. And so Does, does any of this money it. expire at any point? The, the 200000 in San Fran funding does have a date because it was... And what is that date? I, I am sorry, I did not bring that. Is that the closest date coming at you? Both, us, both legislators yes. gave us the money and or the, um, the award that we could apply for the money in 2019. So it is somehow or another in a 12-month cycle, but I think that as long as the project start date falls, within the year, and I'm, I'm just going to say within the calendar year, but I'm not sure uh, that I believe that would be uh, adequate, but I'll have to find out the terms. The senators and the representatives have awarded SAM grants um, to school districts on a regular basis, so when they give it over and they're, they're thinking that, oh, they're renovating a children's library, I'm going to give that money to the constituents, they, the way that gets reimbursed is only when the municipality or the school board makes a commitment to fund it. it. And then you get the money back. And there's a 12 to 18 month lag time sometimes in the payback. Okay. Can you, can you walk through the technology? Because I'm, I'm looking at the numbers here. First of all, the 103 that you have listed here doesn't add up to the totals up down below. Do we add up the total number of projects? Sure. Sorry, you're looking at the part in the budget book, correct? The back up. No, the number here. Oh. So the number the totals we have here on the technology adds up to 83, but the number you have is 103. Are there other technology spending that you have that's not listed? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, what I highlighted in the technology paragraph under key highlights were our three key projects. And uh, these are um, the uh, cloud backup for security, which would be to uh, put, you know, have our um, document storage in the cloud so that we could uh, not vulnerable to uh, attack, ransom attacks. This was discussed by myself and uh, Village Administrator Swazi. Uh, the second is 37,000 for us to, uh, sorry, 38,000 to add to a, um, a PA system to the phone system that is in process. And the purpose of that is that if you need to make an emergency announcement uh, right now, it, or even on a future system, if somebody's on a phone, let's say the only phone in the team room, and there's an emergency announcement to evacuate, that phone won't project the announcement. There would be no way of hearing an announcement, say, in a mechanical room or in an elevator or certain hallways. So we would hope to uh, fill the building. I believe it was about 30, um, 30 speakers in the ceiling. 
30 wall speakers and 17 ceiling speakers, as well as the additional components you'd need so that a phone could make one announcement to the whole building. Uh, so that's the 38. And then the last um, 15,000 is for a smart podium and media equipment for the meeting room, the large meeting room, so that you can plug, right now you can't plug in an HDMI cable if you're trying to do a presentation from a laptop, from an iPad or a laptop or whatever. Um, the wireless microphone standard is about to change and expire, and our microphones are not up to that standard. Um, in general, it's very clunky at that podium for somebody to come in and speak. So we sometimes just have, you know, snags with connecting to the, the display and so on, and uh, this would make it easier in general for that to occur. The differences that you don't see in those three pro after those three projects are for our technology replacements throughout the year, such as uh, printers, power supplies, uh, server um, needs. You do, you do have in here, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But sorry. You, you do have in here 4,000 for printers, 4,000 for tablets, and 10,000 for, for cabling, which again seems a little high. I mean, 4,000 for printers, and I don't know how much printers cost, but the costs have come down tremendously. Uh, but even if you add all that up, it still comes down to 83, which is the 103 that you're showing here. Okay, so I don't know, I'm just trying to... Okay. Um, okay. So, um... Okay. Um, the technology backup, which is in the budget book, includes items such as, um, uh, it does include a, a replacement computer and a new computer. It includes uh, tablet replacements, um, a new uh, NAS device for the server, uh, power supplies. Um, the cabling is significant because we would have to do quite a bit of cabling for the voice over IP uh, phone project. And um, I believe there was also, oh, and that part of that would also be part of the media um, expansion as well. Um, Wi-Fi access points, a replacement scanner, um, game, equip game programs are very popular for the teens. Currently the librarian brings her own game equipment, so that's one of the reasons we have game equipment in that line as well. And then just the standard receipt printers at the desk and the regular uh, printers at the desk. Um, we do, uh, you know, we do have several printers throughout the library. So it is a fairly significant sum uh, on its own. I'm sorry, I don't have a subtotal on that, but... Um, no, I have the PA system. The first line below the table is the, the 37,000 is the PA system. So I don't have a subtotal under the uh, section. I have a question on yes, uh, We just went to full-time security. We have 57 cameras in the building. I can't figure out the light of me. Why you would add another 11 cameras? I don't get it. So we do have some, I, I, I understand uh, it may seem to be a concern. We've actually had, we worked quite a bit uh, this year with GCPD when incidents arose where our uh, footage was very useful, and yet there were dark spots. Uh, we had, um, I prefer not to, What's that? Good Have any cameras be moved to cover those? In a couple of places. First of all, in the original project, some of the cameras were moved to other places, and we did also take into account that we could move other cameras around in order to make certain accommodations. But um, I'm not sure that it's advisable for me to mention the dark spots in, in the meeting, but I think there are some you know, fairly open areas that um, should be secured. Just to that, just to that point, the, cameras, the purpose of the, you know, of cameras for that. Exactly. The purpose of the yeah, cameras yeah, is yeah, not to yeah, put yeah. a monitoring system on every aspect of the library. <coughs> so I, I think that I would have trouble supporting that. And I supported a lot of things. Would it be I better to take a look at the cameras and maybe move the ones that, for example, that maybe near the circulation desk where the collect where the folks <coughs> who work there can see? or in other areas where there are employees and move those to areas where you have the dark spots. I, I would just suggest you might want to take a look at that. Okay, I, that's a good point. Some of it includes, uh, I, some of it is areas like that where maybe there's a camera and we need it, we're looking for it. I don't have the list directly in front of me. But I did do this walkthrough with Lieutenant Warren and the two representatives 
uh, from the camera company when we, and there were, like I said, there were spots where we can consider moving some of those cameras, and it might even be possible to reduce the number, but I do think that some of the cameras uh, are necessary. I think you should take a look first in the next week or so. Is 68 cameras in that building? It's possible. It's plus 11. Right. So you're going to put 60 cameras in there? Uh, I said, don't I mean, think it must be cameras in areas anyway. where, there, where you have librarians and or clerks. We don't need the camera. If you will, I will I will sit down and tell that the camera is There are camera technologies besides the camera that's sitting there facing. There are cameras that yeah. move and swivel. So if you have an area that's wide area and there's no movement, the stationary camera is having three stationary cameras can be replaced in some cases by one. Yeah, that's not uh, an issue. Yeah, yeah. 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 that might be a higher cost for those cameras, but we might be able to Why don't we look at it before we go any further? Plus, if you could incorporate into that, the only thing you will have um, a security guard that will be circulating on a regular basis and you'll know where they are and you'll be able to direct them. So um, I just think we need to, to look at the, the fact that we're starting that new program and uh, incorporate that in before additional technology is added in this area. Okay. Ralph, the only question I have is that we're talking about putting the PA system in. I understand the reason why would make sense if you want to make you know, announcements within the library. Not for nothing. I mean, I've been to enough grocery stores. Everybody ever hear the Kmart Blue Light special? <laughs> so, you know, when they sit there, then what they do is they basically pick up the phone, they push a button, boom, it goes out through the whole thing. So, why you would have to have a phone system and a PA system where, with today's technology, so many of the systems have it built into it? So, for the life of me, I don't know why we just can't have a phone system when you just put it where the PA. So you can. We we talked about this. This is this is of course a, a board decision. So this, the phones that are in there now and the phones that we plan on putting in have that functionality. A couple of things. One is that there's some areas of the library that don't have phones, and so the PA announcement would not be some. So we have to cover those spots. Either the new phone. You don't. You don't need a phone. You don't need a phone. What happens is is that the phone is connected to a speaker that you put up in the thing, and whenever you turn around and you make an announcement on the phone. It goes through either the speakers in the phone or speakers that you have in the room. I mean, this is this is you know 21st technology, year technology. We're not dealing with 1970 technology. So that's what I'm saying to you. It's just I, I think we're kind of looking at this from a technology point of view, archaic. I mean, I just like I said, I, I can't figure it out. Like I said, blue light special, you know, in aisle 12, okay? Or you know, hey, you know. Can you please send Cindy up? We need a cashier. Guess what? When I'm over at Harmon, she sits there, she picks up the phone, she pushes a button. Cindy, come up to the register. Okay, you can hear her. Yeah, you can hear her. I'm still saying he's got to hear her. I'm just here to be managing the supermarket. I'm just saying, to me, I, I, I just find it amazing that we're spending money on two different things when everybody else in the world can use one. Where, where are we putting 35 speakers? They would be covering uh, all the floors. Next year, new cameras. With the 11 new cameras, they would put seven here right now. All in So there are uh, staff areas upstairs. For example, oh, the, the, there's a phone in the staff I'll be on the second floor, which is fairly small. Uh, in the staff section alone, there is a staff room and an office, but then there's also a hallway approaching two restrooms and a mechanical room. If you're in that hallway, if there is a page announcement, you might not hear it, especially with the mechanical equipment. Then if you go out onto the mezzanine floor, if you're over the reference desk and the reference librarian is on the phone, you won't hear the announcement through that phone on that side of the floor, per se. So, yes? The phone system is failing, right? Fair statement? It's unsupported. Past support. So is like this it. plan going to delay that plan? Or are we getting the phone system done now because that's one of these projects yeah. in this this year project. The PA system is um, it's not connected to the phone system per se. The phone system replaces all the existing hardware right. and it will allow them to, like today, broadcast through those phones announcements. But Ralph, shouldn't the PA be, should it be connected to the phone system? Yeah. I mean, you got two different systems. Why? I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I would think that the system, as 
Trustee Bolabrook says the two should be in schools. It's not, and sometimes it's deliberate choice. So I know that um, Mr. Spazzi has been working with them on the phone system and coming to okay. the RP in the bid, and you've come up with a very good deal. But the PA system, and it's not like an open room like the grocery store, pick up, you know, the soap in aisle three. You're behind closed doors, okay. you're in areas right. where you can't hear it, you're on two different floors. So the, the issue is, listen, it's, right now, if someone's on the phone, that phone's not broadcasting in that exactly. closed off room. So, so the choice was, and I don't, I don't know if there's a hybrid choice like Mr. Volker said, where or Deputy Mayor Volker said, where we can marry them together. All I know is that the phone system is a project, and the current system does PA function, and the new phone system does PA function. Because it's a cloud-based solution, they might have to make two calls versus one, just because the, the amount of uh, phones can reach with one call. The PA system was to alleviate those dark spaces that don't have PA coverage now. And that can be achieved by either putting phones there and ignore the city that's just put six extra phones that have no wiring to them, which is a small expense, or have a PA function that's independent of the phone. Okay. Uh, and then also, it would be, so be totally independent of the phone. But if we put out extra phones, we have to pay a monthly cost for the phone because each phone is like a user yeah, license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Like everything else, we're just hoping that people think of alternatives and different. You've already thought the alternatives it doesn't work. Thank you. Yes. Could I add the perspective of the library? Three things. First of all, a lot of discussion here tonight has been discussed previous. To go backwards, the first one was basically the children's room is desperate. We instructed the director not to look. It's, 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 we can't hear you. Okay. The uh, children's room is desperate for repair. We didn't know what so, sort of support we would get from the village board, and we said, concentrate on the children's area. Other than minor changes, it hasn't been changed since 1973. Um, we hear comments of the Western POA. Apparently, it came up that the room smells. So there, we need to do something there. We told the director not to go into the computer room. Oh, well, yes, the computer room should change. We told also, if you notice, you have $100,000 next year for the team room. So we have looked at this and said, we want to look at different departments. The children's room desperately needs to be looked at. As far as security, quite honestly, it was presented to us after many consultations with the police department, which we thank. And they, it came up. Yes, we can look at those cameras, but it came up as something that, they, uh, they, from the people looking at the library, thought it was at the time should be done. And as far as the phone system, all of those things, those questions were asked. We asked, should we put other phones around? We took the perspective we did not want any unsafe areas. You know, you can make that decision, but that's why the board made that decision. So right. pers perspective on it. I understand yeah. Now. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just perhaps deferring the DPW and water operating budget presentation till Thursday's meeting, if that's okay. Fine. Is that fine with everyone else? Yes? 
Does it work for everyone? Does it work for everyone? All right, let's do that. Joey, come on now. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so that's already the, uh, our meeting for this evening. No. I don't know, so we have to walk. Capital projects. Excuse me. Yeah. Or smaller departments to present. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Fire the lights. Just say yes. Looking great, Jeff. Mayor Trustees and fellow residents and citizens review board. Thank you for this opportunity to present the Fire Homes proposed budget tonight. I'd also like to thank President Wu and Village Administrator Swazi for assistance getting this budget, our budget this morning. I think it's important to, to, uh, to mention we continue to move forward as an all volunteer fire department and strive to provide professional emergency services to the village, supported by well trained, well equipped, dedicated volunteers that want to serve the community in which they live. Our current staffing is at 96 volunteers and as our prior agreement, we will be down to one full-time, non-active, paid employee, and three employees on three on 207 disability in the uh, coming 2020-21 budget year. Um, the department is managed by one chief, three assistant chiefs. I have assistant chief William is my right, uh, chief uh, William Storo behind me, and my other chief, Chief O'Malley, is at an OEM uh, meeting. Discussing, discussing the coronavirus virus uh, in, uh, in the Essex County OEM. Uh, we have two captains, four attendants, three safety officers, and we all volunteers. Uh, 96 members channel their free time and energy to make the Garden City Fire Department the great organization that it continues to be. They respond to the closest firehouse and utilize the, pro uh, the appropriate apparatus needed for the emergency at hand. Some members are able to bring their work to a firehouse to respond when needed. Others that are attending college locally bring their work to the firehouse as well and respond when needed. Moving on with our, moving on with our presentation, um, we have a few items in our capital budget request. Starting with our, our oldest engine, engine 142. It's a 2004 C-grade engine. This engine is 16 years old and um, we're having maintenance issues that are increasing with age. Over the last two years, repair costs are approximately $41,500, and parts are becoming difficult to find for this active fire engine. We also have put some other repairs issues on hold based on the possibility of this engine being replaced. 142 had approximately 39,000 miles on it, which is not a true representation of use. Once an engine gets to a long location for use for training, it remains in operation for pumping, and the dominant doesn't reflect that usage. When it is in operation, it's driving a 1,500-gallon pump to pump water to fire or for training purposes. It only has a six-seat cab compared to our other eight crew cabs. And many times, there are more members from the West and East State sections able to respond than there are seats. It was an unwritten rule that fire engines should be replaced at the 20-year mark. I believe that rule is based on old type fire trucks, which didn't have the technology and it's now seen extensively on our newer fire trucks. New technology is great, but parts become obsolete faster with the newer technology and regulations. A new apparatus would have a five-year bumper bump warranty. We have engine 145 and heavy rescue 146 that just came off their five-year warranty and with no piece of vehicle maintenance costs going forward. Moving on, uh, we have we're looking to replace an old command vehicle, uh, Unit 148. It's a 2007 Suburban. Um, the vehicle was originally used for the professional duty lieutenants. Uh, since the department's restructuring, we have tried to repurpose this vehicle as a duty vehicle for our duty officers, volunteers, and member transport. However, it only has three seats, including the driver, due to its original design, and it's a full size Suburban. The oldest chief's vehicle would be replaced and repurposed as a duty vehicle if this was uh, approved to be replaced. Uh, we have self-contained breathing apparatus. Um, those uh, self-contained breathing apparatus are powered or aired by Scott cylinders. Um, 
not pictured in my, my presentation. Um, they're only rated for 15 year lifespan. After 15 years, they have to be replaced. And we have 48 cylinders that must be replaced in the coming budget year. Um, they're about $1,300 a piece. <coughs> Uh, we'd like to do some uh, renovations in the fire stations. Um, fire station number three in the east, um, we'd like to um, request $200,000. Uh, we'd like to upgrade the station. Upgrades to the station have not been done in many years. Volunteers have recently painted the walls, ceiling tile upgrades, and ceiling tile panels were replaced to help refresh the station. We'd like to continue some updates to one of the older bathrooms pictured here. <laughs> The kitchen, uh, the, uh, or, uh, the kitchen lunch area, also picture a slop sink, which currently has a, um, a broken pipe and the sink can't be used at this moment. And um, oops. it's actually shut off this time because of the broken pipe. Um, this is a member um, standby area. We're looking to upgrade that. The property's all um, in bad shape. I believe there's a special tiles that are under that have to be replaced. Um, and also we'd like to update the, the air conditioner. Currently we use window units, we take them out in winter time for security reasons, they're not very secure, we, put, we load them down to the basement and bring them back up. And also there's, uh, next slide please. there's an outside porch area, this is by a bus station, um, it's not secure. We currently we frequently find people hanging out there in the rain, uh, waiting for a bus or other people hanging out there. We'd like to fence this area off, make it more secure, so members are responding. Um, they're not surprised by someone behind one of the columns there. Just want to put a nice fence over there and uh, protect the area. Um, moving on to headquarters. Um, next slide. Uh, we would like to renovate the, um, the area near the bathroom, shower, and gear washing machine. The gear washing machine is very important to us. Uh, after a fire, we have to wash our, our gear from contaminants from the fire. Our gear is very heavy, it's got buckles, it requires an industrial type washing machine. When we purchased a, a new gear washer last year to replace a 20 year old machine and tried to install it professionally, several code issues were brought to our attention and halted its, halted its installation. To install just the gear washer and resolve the code issues pertaining to its installation at that time was $28,000 and we didn't have the additional funds in our budget at that time. The adjacent uh, first floor bathroom is old.
know, he's an author and he totally uh, looked at it and made some quick changes that brought the cost down and take care of all the violations. So uh, it really meets all the needs. Great. You have a quick question here. That bathroom on the right, when was that done? That was done before I got here, and I see that it was uh, built by the fireman, I, I believe, the date stamp. First, it was built by the paid fireman. And it was, it does meet OSHA requirements, and uh, that's just a shower, there's no toilet. There's no toilet in there, right? So we want to marry these two up and bring it down to the ground. Is there exhaust in there and all that? No, no. Why it looks like it's you know, looking like it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, any oversight. They just went ahead and put it in, and it looks it, it doesn't meet any requirements. It's like a, it, it's terrible. All right. I'm good. So that's what we're looking to do for headquarters. Fire station number two, I guess. Phase one. Might be a little bumps along the road. I don't have any pictures of that. So, uh, Trustee Blaney has some sheets. I apologize for the crudeness of the diagram you're about to receive. It's a good to go to 630. Uh, it's a document, but it, I think when I go through it, you'll see that I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So basically, on February 20th, the architects uh, who the board approved funding for last year to do the 3D concept diagram they, they presented to this board and although it had an affirmative vote, my feeling from the board was that you encourage the architects and fire department to back a proposal for the next phase which would be to, to quantify the, uh, to get as accurate a cost estimate for the building as we have and that would be at the 60% uh, design phase. So this chart from the top to the bottom, if you look at it, proposal one was what we received last year, the board approved, and that is what was delivered to you on February 20th, uh, 20th board meeting. Proposal two is what I received two days ago. Proposal two takes the design to the 6% mark, which is the point where they can get a very solid, probable cost to bring back to the board. 60%. 60%. It's so. 60 60% design so that they would have a very good hold of command of what the cost would be. This is at 6%. The fire department's done with their design. The civil engineers done with their design. They are coming back to you, the board, and saying, we have everything we have, we need to know to do the construction documents, which is the final portion, which is phase three. The reason I put this up there this way is because the proposal that came back in two has a cost of $285,000, but the budget the board allocated this year is $175,000. So what I, so and if you look at the line, this line here, the long line here, so the total cost of the entire project, I'm sorry, minus the 21, I shouldn't extend that line to the left. The total cost of two and three together is about $475,000. The total cost of getting documentation, uh, inspects, the, inspects all the stuff that we, all the stuff that the, this board would have to make it, decision on as to whether to move forward. Right. The, the, I'm sorry, let's let me let me be clear. The I was gonna say 285 is to 285. Right. right. The one ninety is to make construction. Right. Document. right. I'm sorry. So you're right. right. But it was so basically the basically uh Tusty Blaine and myself, Chief Fisco are on the phone today and I spoke to the architects three times about this and Chief Fisco as well. So we have a budget of one seventy five. Had proposal two come in at one seventy, I would have signed in this start this week. But since it's over the budget, what I've come back to them and asked them to do, and if, can you raise it up, this book? What I've, what I've done is, so proposal one is completed and delivered to you in February. Proposal two, if proposal two at 30% goes about 175, give or take 3%, 5%. So if, if they come back to me with a proposal that's broken up into two sections, the 30% being the 175 I have now, they can start as soon as I sign it, basically. They can start, and that will carry them through April, May, right into early June. And then the number that, that is on the capital project sheet that the chief is presenting, the 525, we don't need all the 525. We need about 475. So we already have 175. We really need about uh, $300,000, maybe, maybe 400, because I, I want them to build a little contingency in, even though it shouldn't need that much. So if you take 175 we have now, and give me and, and they and he puts in his budget 300, 325, so 525. That second proposal will come um, 
in the future. But we, with 175 we have now, we can continue right through to May, June. At that point, Proposal 3 will be already approved, and around, uh, around uh, June and July, we'll start finishing the rest of that 6%, the second half of that 6%, and go right into the 40% to the design, to the spec. So they'll still stop at the 60% mark to get the color head to last 4% from the last 4% from this board. Right. So you still need them to get the 6% to give you an order of magnitude number. Well, it's not exact because we don't know until we put it out to bid. But that 6% design will give them a very reliable uh, tree construction number. For the 60% so should get us to the point where this board can make a decision. Okay, get your bid set. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the, the bid set stage. Right? Yes, we'll get yeah. to the point where we will we'll we'll know how much it costs and how long it'll take. And exactly. The exactly. And, and then this board will make a decision as to whether we want to move forward. So, so if the board is still on this path, which I think you are, the alternative would be for Chief Strisco for next Thursday's meeting to ask you for another 10000 just to prove the proposal as it is. But we don't need it because they're not going to get there until June or July anyway. So rather than throw our money out now, just put in next year's capital and lower the request to what we really need. We'll have a final number on March 26, so whether it's 300 or 325, I don't know today, but it's not my opinion. My, my personal opinion is like, it's money we're going to spend anyway, whether you call it tomato, tomato, but it's cheap. Next exactly, week. exactly. No, no, I mean, like, the way we're cutting it up it is irrelevant. This is what it costs if we're okay All with it. But wherever it makes sense in the budget, let's get it. Yeah, so, so my, my, my thing is that rather than tonight you can decide, hey, just in other words, I'll, all you have to do is read the paperwork and give me the proposal with 30%, and I can move ahead, and then the other 30% gets shoved into the next proposal. But the, the, I just want to make sure you're clear. The point of 60%, that clarity, coming back to the board and saying, this is what we think the cost will be, that's looking back at the 60% mark. The $10 million number that he put the budget was not based on design documents. It is a placeholder, and we think it's too high. Based on a presentation that happened on the, on the 20th, they're in the 6.02 million range, but that was based on, on uh, you know, square footage cost compared to other fire departments in Melbourne. So 10 is probably too high, 6 is probably too low, it's probably somewhere in between, but we don't know if we have to What we'd like to do, actually, is maybe at the next trustee meeting, is increase the amount that we can go to 60%. We have 175 now. We need another 110. We get 60 percent, and that the, the, those documents would probably be available sometime this summer. Where at the end of the 60 percent, we would make a decision as to whether we want to go uh, and. Oh. Personally, I mean, I understand like you're breaking out into percentages of money because this is a money decision. But just saying we want to develop a bid set makes it more clear, I think, for most people okay. as opposed to saying I want to do 60 percent of something. You want a bid set, and it's you want to create a bid set, so you can get a good line of sight on the timing and cost. But the 60 the percent number, if that number comes in at 10.5 million dollars, you can say go ahead if you wish. Right. Yeah, no, no. Or, you have to stop if it's said. Right. Back. You got to right. stop and say, do we want to redesign, re-engineer this somehow? Yeah. Yeah. So we need an addition to, to get to the what the bid set. We need another one hundred and ten thousand. One hundred ten, or because the one seventy five will carry us to June anyway, you can put it in the capital. It'll, be, it'll come it'll come online in June first. They won't need it until they July anyway. So it's, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, yeah. as long as you as long as you agree. It's the most beneficial way. Of it's fine. It's another hundred ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't know if they've seen it. Have you seen the rendering? <laughs> have you seen the rendering? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a picture? Unfortunately, uh, no. Well, well, rule number one is just like presentation 101. We can put the rendering. The rendering can go on. Now, can they show you the rug again? And if we make it back, we can show you the small rendering. It's hot in here again. Why are we doing that HVAC? <laughs> <laughs> the library. It was a thousand degrees in here. Set the heat off the ground. There we go. That's what we need to get. Okay. So, so, I guess I'm not really asking for money tonight. What I want to show you is that. Move, the, move this along, I could work with a re written proposal so I can spend the 175 already budgeted and the, the other money be kicked into this because they're not by this number. Okay, but we should do that. Move, move forward to 175 so we get the, the, the ball on the road. 
and it's been used at several parks in the state park system, Village of Flora Park, and a couple of private places have used it, all to good results. It's a little bit more forgiving than the rubber tiles or the rubber surface. I love shade trees, but it doesn't get as hot as the rubber surface. It also is more user friendly. It's more like grass than rubber. It's, we think, a better surface. So we are going to start putting that in first at Edgemere and then secondly over here at St. Paul. Does it last as long? Yes, it seems to have a very good lifespan. Uh, it's got a six inch rubber pad on the bottom and the top is the same type of synthetic turf that you see on our multi-purpose, on our ball field stem community park. Except instead of being spread with rubber crumb like those fields, they use a little bit of silica sand to help hold it down and keep it cooler. The nice thing about this surface is, if I could just go on, it does not require an asphalt underlayment. It can be installed over compacted bluestone. It's also very forgiving in terms of rainwater dispersal and vegetation, so it will allow us to retain trees in those playgrounds where we have trees. And there are two beautiful oak trees at Edgemere Park that shade that playground. We didn't want to take them down. But they are trees are cooked for some of the cause. Will this solve that problem? Yes, it will. Well, what's the maintenance? Is the maintenance the same? There's very little maintenance other than uh, just like we would with the synth synthetic turf fields, they require occasional brushing and occasional infilling with the silica sand. We would do that ourselves. We would do that ourselves. Well, quick question. Do, do we coat the rubber? Because I know for the, for the crumb rubber, we usually have to coat them so that we don't give, give, give off the VOCs and the temperature. I mean, would we do the same thing here? There's, there's no rubber to coat because what we have is we're installing compacted bluestone, then there's a thick sponge pad, and then on top of it goes the actual synthetic turf, the, the green blades. That sponge pad is it rubber though? It is a composite. It does not need to be coated. It's okay. similar to uh, what you might find in a, uh, in, a gym, in a jumping gym. Okay, got it. Moving along. Parks and Recreation Equipment. This is an ongoing project that we started last year. The five neighborhood playgrounds are in need of renewal and renovation. They are not up to the standards that we would like to see. The department has done a great job in making Community Park one of the real jewels of our village. Uh, but you only see that if your child or you are going down to play at Community Park. The five playgrounds, however, are neighbors. They are in your neighborhoods, they are in with your homes, and they are in with your landscaping. And they should be representative of the areas in which they are. We would like to get in there and clean up the buildings, put in nice new furnishings, new tables, new benches, basketball backboards and standards should be uniform throughout the parks. Right now we have a mishmash of summer porter, summer true bounce, summer quick goal. Uh, makes it difficult for us to do repairs. We have to keep a bunch of different types of hoops and rims in stock. We would like to standardize on the true bounce backboards that we have at Grove Park. If you've seen them, they are the clear resin backboards. Uh, we standardized on them many years ago because they come with a lifetime warranty. And as a matter of fact, we had one crack last summer, and 21 years after we put it in, they came out and replaced it, no questions asked. So we'd like to do that for all of the parks. We, we really want to bring the playgrounds up to the snuff that they deserve. And as you have heard in several meetings now, we have recently renovated the bathrooms in all five neighborhood parks. They received new tiles, new partitions, all the fixtures were basically pressure washed, steam cleaned, and cleaned up, and they're all in good condition now. So now it's time to go work on the outside of these buildings. Next up, our LED field lighting project. And uh, I know on your summary sheet it shows $405,000. There's actually $182,000 available right now, and that project is in the hands of our purchasing department. That is to change the LED lights on field number three of Community Park. We are hopeful of being able to purchase this project under a cooperative bidding agreement that the village entered into several years ago. That would allow us to not have to put the project out to bid. It would be a cost savings of about $29,000 on the engineering fees just to design the project. Uh, this is being done in conjunction with Musco Lights. They are the group that does all of our lights at Community Park. 
and the remainder of the money coming out is going to be for the roller hockey and uh, field four, and a couple of lights on the miniature golf course. Is now is there grant money available similar to the Francisco? I, I don't know that there's grant money for athletic lighting. I did put a request over to the State Recreation and Park Society. They have a grants clearinghouse. They are investigating that now. So far, I've not heard anything. Why, why would we give you the roller hockey? That's the newest lighting. They're not LEDs. No, I understand it, but they're only, what, six years old? Six or seven years old. It just seems to make sense to convert everything to LEDs, get the benefit maybe of getting some economy by measure of doing more standards at once, and not have to worry about them going forward. Uh, the village has been very aggressive in putting LEDs in and reducing electric costs. We also are getting to the point where a six or seven year old traditional light, we can expect to have bulb failures. I say, we're, it probably come out. we're seeing that this year. To be honest with you, we went out and flipped on all the lights last week on field three and four, and much to our surprise, over the winter, probably from shaking in the wind, we had about two dozen lights out. So we have our uh, electrician coming in to troubleshoot. We're sure they're just bulbs, but this is a problem we're not going to have if we go to the LEDs. Uh, the next project, security infrastructure, this was uh, presented to us uh, a year or two ago by Intellitech, and it uh, calls for installing cameras and uh, internet access and all the parks, uh, as well as secure doors, and locks, and gates. As you all know, we've had some security issues, especially in the last month, and we've taken some steps to correct them. We also want to have all of our park employees able to swipe in with a swipe card for their hours, and this will allow us to do that at those parks. This project has already been started. Intellitech has done cameras and security at the swimming pool, and this will take us out into the five neighborhood parks and the remainder of the park and the maintenance area. I just mentioned uh, last year when they were doing the construction at the uh, pool, we had Intellitech run fix the cameras that were there and run the wire for the systems to, to connect all the parts on the old system so the installation of the cameras of the quality infrastructure are done at the the park. Is swipe, swipe in or fingerprint? Uh, right now we're using swipe cards. Uh, all of the employees in the village have been issued swipe cards in all the departments. I believe it's, it's all online now and all payroll is, is being done now automatically through those cards. It's a, member, it's a matter of the and we still have cameras at all the parks? We will have cameras at all the parks. We do not at the current time. They're just at the pool, and I think there's one or two in the maintenance area behind the swimming pool. Yeah, we phased in when, when the police uh, designed the <coughs> initial camera project here on the Homeland Security Grant. We designed it so we have the all cameras out to all of our assets, starting with water and the sewer. That's very important. How many, how many of those kids around? If we did this, we phased them in. How many, collectively, how many cameras would you have? I'm not sure, Ryan. I haven't seen the, I haven't seen like this. Many as the library. library. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. My suspicion is it would be multiple in each park, probably around a dozen, because we want to get the ball field, the tennis courts, the bathrooms, the park building, the gates. You start putting that together, you're probably looking at, at anywhere between maybe six and a dozen. It would be my guess. So, so I just want to, again, when this was designed uh, three or four years ago, the technology for cameras may have changed that we might be able to upgrade some of the equipment. Right. Trustee has points out. I'm hoping part of this is we have big ass signs that say <laughs> under surveillance. <laughs> the two by two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, One more 12 by 12 signs. <laughs> we, we just went out on a sign replacement project and I don't think that one was in there, but I think I can get one made up. I think it's I think it's important. I think when they it it out, it's very important it to have the parks no, it's and all that stuff. I think it's uh, yes. I think it's a big deal. Yeah. At the last couple of projects, um, priority number seven is fence replacement. We started this project this past spring. This is replacing some of the entrance fences and gates at the, again, the neighborhood playgrounds. We did Grove Street and Nassau Haven and Stewart Field. 
in coming years, we'd like to replace the entrance fences at Tullamore, Edgemere, and Hemlock as well. Next, number eight. Uh, this is a number that we got from CMY based on their environmental group's recommendations. It is um, a number for the abatement of the St. Paul's main building. Uh, they advised us that uh, they were looking at about a $2 million hit for that number. Uh, and we've got that in our budget since all of the St. Paul's capital has been in our budget for the past couple of years. Would that be a separate meeting, maybe? Not really for the abatement. No, but not for the abatement because whatever we do, the, the hazardous material has to be taken out. So yeah. Yeah. that's a, unfortunately, not up for discussion. Uh, the next project is uh, an equipment storage facility. This has been talked about for a few years. I think Trustee Delaney may get his steel shed building. Uh, it's construction of a butler style building to put all of the recreation and parks equip recreation equipment in. We've outgrown that garage that's behind the pool and much of our equipment, like the fire trucks, stays out all winter long and all summer long. Some of them under a little canopy and some of them just out in the plain air. Uh, we would anticipate locating this um, down by the swimming pool behind the pool pump house where we have that corral right now where it just seems to be a collection of unused parts. Um, that building would be placed at that location. Uh, yeah, it calls for a, a heated, uh, secure building. I would say there'll be cameras there because, as Mr. Swazi indicated, we did run uh, the infrastructure to put cameras down there as well. And I believe there's a camera located by the pump room, so it would just be an extension out from there. Well, I would think we have an alarm on the building for sure because it's remote from where the maintenance employees normally sit. Yeah. Yeah. We treat it like we treat the water department as if it's an alarm on it. Well, I, I thought it would be, at least maybe it's in here somewhere, maybe in some of the I'm not sure, but we had talked about another turf field being put in either at Community Park or at Stewart. Is that anywhere in here? That does not reflect in here right now. We thought we would hold off on putting that in until we went through one full season this spring with Little League soccer and lacrosse to see what their trending is. We may not need another turf field out in Stewart if we can cut the number of football games down there. And if the work that we've done on the ball fields there proves to be adequate, we did a renovation, as you recall, on the backfield at Stewart. Um, we regraded it. We put out 100-plus tons of clay on that field. The front field was reclayed about three years ago, I believe. And the small fence field is in pretty good condition. So the only question for turf seems to be the problem that we have with some of the football games, which you brought to our attention over there. Uh, we think that we have caught, talked the football people into playing their games all at Community Park. If we go over at Stewart this year, it would be just for a handful of games. Right. I think last year there were eight football games in Stewart Field. But that come kind of lacrosse season, all boys, girls, everything works at Community Park. And at St. Paul's. We have two fields set up this spring in St. Paul's. So we do use the natural turf at St. Paul's, and we do use the synthetic turf at Community Park. It's just surprising we only have one. Field, really. I mean, just in comparison to other towns, and I know there could be, you know, practicing things, um, you know, in the fall. He said he may do that. He's going to look at. Yeah, no, I know. What did that mean? Yeah, no, no, no. I know. You know, that's that's probably true. I wasn't going to say that. I really. No, no. You know, I, it is. It's surprising because most towns have multiple. Well, you know. Fields. You know, I know we have St. Paul's and the natural turf is great. Yeah. Except when you run and you hit a spring <laughs> We we also <laughs> have so great anymore. You know, we 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 don't function here in in a vacuum. We sure. departments all speak with each other a lot. And as, as I indicated <laughs> As I indicated <laughs> I think, to Trustee Boulderbrook the other day, we're aware that the village is facing a pretty heavy capital year. You know, in discussions with Irene and Darcia and my conversations with Jody Francisco, we know we've got some heavy projects coming down the road between water mains and water treatment, sewer pipes, and the possible St. Paul's building. Uh, 
it seemed like it made sense to come in with a, a reasonable request this year and, and try to hold the line on some of our projects and until we get a better idea of what's going to happen going forward, particularly with those 43 acres at St. Paul's, because that's the kind of the elephants in the room right now. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. Just curious. Last couple of projects, our tree management program, we will continue aggressively planting trees and replenishing our trees. Uh, we are very proud of our, what we used to call our urban forest here. And that is all we have for the current year's requests. Hey, one of my favorite topics, the mini golf course. Yes. Can't we just at least put 20 grand into it this year and Put in a freaking windmill. <laughs> <laughs> the most, the most, the most frequently heard uh, comment down there, <laughs> when people first walk up and see it, the, the most frequently heard comment is, where's the windmill? Yeah. So to address that, we are adding some obstacles to the existing course this year. The first thing we did, the course as currently built does not have a proper 19th hole which captures the golf balls. The golf balls go into that little hole, the kids pick them up and they pocket them and take them home. So we have ordered and are awaiting shipment of an actual 19th hole with a little clown face and you put the wall in face. and we can put it right next to the fence. We also are planning on buying several obstacles from, there are a couple of good manufacturers right over in Pennsylvania. I don't know that we can put electrified ones in there this year, but we are definitely going to put a couple of obstacles out there. Why don't you look and see what it would cost to put a window? <laughs> I will. I will do my best to find a window. This is not a Brian Dunning. I know it's silly, but it's a long-term comment. Yes. We we need to we need to look at the entire course because the the basic design of the course is not really terrific. If you go down there. If you look at all the holes, out of the 18 holes, 16 of them are a straight putt from the tee to the cup with no, with no obstacle. I mean, you don't even have to go around a little piece of wood in the middle of the fairway. Sometimes you have the so, raging water, and sometimes no water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that water hazard, by the way, we had issues with the last year's developed leaks. We've had to go in and patch it, and we are very nervous about the fact that it's deep enough for the kids to want to get in there, and we have had supervision issues with young children in that water hazard. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that big pond on that golf course. So we are going to take a look at a few things this year, and out the next year or two, we'd like to bring it up to what a typical miniature golf course might look like. Visually stimulating, fun, a little bit of whimsy in it that the I, kids I can really get into. You know, whether it's you know, 12 grand or $23,000, it would make a very short term big difference. So, including, including the retaining walls that aren't retaining anything anymore, and that's one of the reasons kids are in the, in the pool. No question. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I, I just wanted to ask, I know we've talked about the Grove Park tennis at the EPOA meetings, and I know that's a double court, and there's been some talk about how much use does it get. So since it's pushed out five years, we may want to gather some usage data on that court in the next couple of years to see does it pay to put a double or a single in. We have reached out through Judy Courtney to the EPOA to ask what their desire would be, because tennis participation is down overall. And that area might be a real nice spot to try a new type of musical playground, or perhaps a little spray and play. Maybe we want to do something completely different over there. Running late. But we are running. reaching out to EPOA, and we will see what okay, the thing is. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate That's that. Good, Mrs. Smith. Yes, sir. Paul. Uh, I was understanding to report a grant commission grant from the EPOA that uh, this budget will address Grove Street Park. Wooden borders and the other landscaping aspects. The, the wooden area. The wooden railroad will be addressed in our operating budget. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Let's go on. Thank you. Greetings to the mayor, trustees, Seabrook, and uh, thank you, Courtney. Sorry, thank you, Irene, and thank you, Tossi. 
Uh, the police department is uh, looking to replace three vehicles this year. We are intending to transfer to hybrid or hybrid interceptors. Uh, we have two on order now. They're getting great reviews. Uh, we'll save five to seven uh, miles per gallon. And also we are going to get, uh, let's say, 22,000 pounds, I don't know what that is, of CO transmissions. That's what they say in the specs. Technology, we have 27,000. We're going to replace three mobile data units in the vehicles. Those mobile data units are also computers. They also integrate with the uh, record management system, license plate readers, the bottom of cell, and, uh, cell phones, and the new ticket writer software. Uh, they also allow car to car and car to headquarter messaging, and they also allow for report writing to be completed in the field and not in headquarters, so it keeps the officers on the road. And also, the newer ones are able to be taken out and going into the building. So, if you have an arrest at hotel, we go right on the street. We don't, we don't waste time keeping people in if we don't have to, or, so, or if we take a report. They also are now dynamic. They come out and we can document it in our new command bus. Because this year we are putting in docking stations there. So, if we have a major event or a uh, truck stop or something like that, we can take the machines and put them in these docking stations and do the report writing right there. We also are purchasing one handheld ticket writer, just right there, wear and tear, and they uh, get used a lot. A couple items that we have uh, ongoing uh, radio communications. This year we are ready to purchase 13 more uh, mobile and handheld units. These are the tri bands. These are, are able to take care of our uh, Nassau County radio system, also with the, uh, our legacy system, which the ambulance uses now. And uh, it also has a third band if the Nassau County uh, goes to the 800 megahertz, which they might do in the next three to seven years, uh, we'll be able to switch over to them and keep the same radios. There's also uh, the um, AED replacement. We had slated to replace all the AEDs in the village this year. Uh, our medical officer, Lieutenant Jacobson, says they're all in good shape and we are still able to get all the accessories for those items. So we do not need to replace them this year. So moving that back, uh, those machines are not being made anymore, but we are in very good shape with accessories. And uh, so we think uh, we can go into the year with that. The city security infrastructure, we moved that back. Um, the idea of this was license plate readers at, uh, on all the main roads uh, entering the village. There is new technology that's being formulated by a couple companies. Uh, right now, you need um, a camera for each lane. The new technology uh, that's formulated right now will do one camera, maybe a couple, two or three lanes. Big cost uh, difference, uh, and I think it's worthwhile waiting one year, especially the fact that we're doing security infrastructure at the recreation. So I feel that this is a good move, and hopefully we'll save some money, and uh, the camera technology is definitely increasing. Also, Nassau, I'm working with Nassau County Police Commissioner on obtaining possibly a couple um, license plate readers to be installed. Uh, they're still working on a possibility with some of the villages, so I'd like to see how that pans out too. And the only other thing I have on there is the range re, uh, range uh, reimbursement. Uh, reimbursement. Uh, that's going to be a, uh, in three years. We, uh, we have an old uh, sand trap system. We want to go to a rubberized system. We need new uh, you know, uh, barriers and, and target systems and everything else. But we're still good. We're about three years from now on that. So uh, that's, a, that's in our five year plan. Thank you. Yes, sir. Commissioner, is there anything we can do to improve the way that we do uh, parking lot? Uh, you know, instead of. Instead of one of our guys marking a tire, I mean, it's so antiquated. Isn't there any technology that, you know, they can. License plate reader that would be timed. Is, is there anything we can do here? I mean, it's crazy that <coughs> we have guys basically you start a parking lot, you get to the end, you get to start again. It's like crazy. Yes, I, that has been uh, brought about by um, a couple of people who, uh, who investigated it. The problem with that is the testimony in court. Testimony in court, the, uh, the time mark does hold up. Uh, the license plate reader doesn't tell you if the vehicle moves or not. So uh, if somebody says, I moved the vehicle, uh, you, you may not be able to win that in court. That's, that's the problem with the license plate reader. And it 
it's, 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 it could be a court issue. Well, what, what if we instead did those machines where every spot is numbered? Don't charge people. Don't charge people. But yeah, I believe one of the towns on East does that, that, that would work. There's lots of towns yeah. that would work. But that, that, that's something that would work. Do you have any idea what a system like that costs? I don't know. I would find out. Oh, they all they use it all the time. Yeah, they charge. Charge. Yeah, yeah. 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 charge. Don't have to charge, but we can we can find out what the system costs. Yeah. They just put it. They just put it into one of the new one of their old parking lots uh, on off the new old. Rockville Seven has it. Rainneck has it. They do have much bigger. They don't charge. I think they charge. That's in the Yeah, we did it. Seven and like. I don't know how much it costs, but how much agita would that create? Well, the thing is, it would, it would, let's say you pull into a space as a half hour thing. You have to go to the machine, put your space number in, right? I'm not lucky, dude. I have four kids tugging on me. I know more stuff. You don't have to do that. Don't make me do that. Do it in one or two hours. One in two hours. Well, we hear it on the talk, but they go with you more. Come on, let me make my life harder. Money the guys in the last no, 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 I know, I know. I'm just, I'm half joking, but there's got to, maybe there's multiple ways we don't have to settle it right now at 11 o'clock, but something that doesn't make a, a person who shall remain nameless, let's say, who has four kids, two of which are crying and screaming, has to get out and prolong the pain in town of picking up his dry kid and maybe you just want to get the hell home. Yeah, but, but you can actually do that now with this. Award 
that number of boxes, and we use that to create a fabricated unit cost, even though each box could be different, depending on the size of the sheets and stuff like that. So we think this number is, is accurate. The rehab of monuments, um, as you know, over the last few years, we've done a number of things. We, uh, Mr. DeFrancisco and I have put time into the 7th Street uh, World War II mon mon monuments and also the double day plaques. Uh, Mr. Smith brought to our attention that were housed at the Historical Society. Uh, we have updated lighting, we've uh, cleaned the monuments, we, uh, with the help, by the way, of our mechanics at the DW shop and our recreation teams and our street crews, uh, everyone's contributed to this. Uh, we also did the Rainbow Monument. Uh, we totally reinvented that monument. It was a, a nice place before, but we took away the damaged bushes, we redid the concrete, we put LED lights in there, the EQA donated a flagpole. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually an outstanding feature on the east side at night and during the day. Uh, we did the fire department monument last year, so we want to continue. There's a World War II monument at Osborne. I want to work with the EQA because the flagpole, this giant flagpole, like 35 feet flagpole, is right in front of the stone. We think the flagpole should be moved behind the stone versus trying to move the monument forward. Uh, we'd like to make sure that the EPO neighbors and EPO itself agree with that. We would try to use the same flagpole. We want to add permanent benches there, re landscape it, add lights. We think that the veterans of any uh, service from the origin of this country to today deserve the recognition night and day. Uh, so we'd like to attack that point. Over at the Fire Department Monument, when we got to doing that, it originally started with a brick expansion project and, and re landscaping. Uh, we realized, though, that when we got into just at the Rainbow Monument, there's so much more we'd like to do. We'd like to take the two stone banks that are on the south side of the monument and get two new ones for the north side so people can see uh, and reflect on those names. We'd like to put some trees in. Mr. Blake uh, from Recreation has talked about the cost of the trees they built into this budget. We'd like to put four inside in a semicircle. We'd like to put lights on both sides of the monument so it's lit properly. So um, that's what that is about. The gazebo, while not a monument in and of itself, the brick pathway that goes there is uprooted by tree roots. It's uh, it's crumbling and it terminates at a um, a ramp that's not ADA compliant. So we'd like to have our internal street department extend the concrete of the ramp down and toward the sidewalk and replace all the bricks with basically the uh, the same guys who did the fire department monument. Um, a very good price, they did very good work. At the same time, we'd like to upgrade the landscaping and the deteriorating fence along the north side of that walkway. It's used by the village for many popular events and also used by many people for uh, just sitting down and also for wedding pictures and stuff. So I think it's a nice feature we need to enhance. Um, office construction. You know, the office construction is in, in the main complex here. The, the Village Hall campus that includes the fire department and the police department. A number of years ago, before I got here, the fire department, the police department was upgraded, modernized. The fire department, we did a modernization about four years ago. Uh, Mr. Giovanello has upgraded the uh, majority of his workspace and it's much more functional and modern today and uh, there's a second base that which includes kiosks down in the second floor lobby. Mr. DeFrancisco is on the cusp of starting his renovation either at the end of March or early April. The space downstairs in the uh, finance department and village clerk's office basically is, is we've outgrown it. Uh, it's not efficiently used. It's not secure to the degree that it should be. So this and it also has uh, besides the need to upgrade LED lights, this probably is best to styles under the road, so the remediation. So we think the $300,000 number, while not fixed in some concrete right now, we think it's a, a, a very plausible and accurate number. But the idea is to <coughs> reinvent the space with the help again of Mr. Juvenile, our in-house architect, who we gladly donates his time to the village. Uh, so happy to <laughs> But to, to reinvent the space, like, you know, I was imagining with four walls, and just the columns, and it's okay. Modernize the furniture. We want to build some permanent office space. Uh, because the clerk and her assistant are on top of each other. And then the rest of it is to, to put out new modern cubicles, lighting, and also respect the partitions that exist with heating systems and such like that. So, uh, and also a secure screens in front of the desk, uh, make that space a little less, and also uh, add security. And the last one, technology. The, our website is, uh, run by a company known as Gov Office. It's a, uh, they're the engine that runs it. It's a system that uh, our PR person uses uh, in conjunction with those clerk to update many things from the website. The problem is, it was the, the web technology that exists today, for the most part, 
was designed when the only way to get to it was through a computer, but now we have mobile devices and tablets. This is not ADA compliant. Uh, so to the degree that uh, we, have an, uh, we have an offer here, the full price for one year is about $23,000, $20,000. They have a phase of doing spend $7,000 a year. Uh, why do that? Let's get it all done. But uh, the one thing about this I want to just mention to the board is that if we reference another site, like a county site, a state site, or even a recreation website, those downstream sites not, might not themselves be equal clients. So this is really to take, take care of our presentations to the public and, and we can try to address all the other downstream sites that we control in the future years. But that would be uh, ADA compliance. That, that's my, those are my five capital projects, one which is not before you yet. One of the things that, that Trustee Garnier mentioned about is looking at potentially for a statue or a monument for Mrs. Stewart. Is that something that you need to not this year considered for next year's I'm sorry, say that. A statue for Mrs. Stewart. Mrs. Stewart? Yeah. I mean, something that, that, that uh, Trustee Garnier had mentioned previously. That's something that we can look into. We could, look, we could definitely look into that. Uh, we'd have to look at uh, location, size. If you want a pedestal, if you want the same semi. Um, I'm certainly willing to chase down. I don't think it's something that's possible. The 48,000 is for the work I've already specified. Some of that is probably a little bit higher no, price. No, 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 no. Is the 48,000 sufficient for the work that you think you want to do? Um, that's what Trustee Hires asked. In other words, it sounded like a lot. Is that really I think so, but I, I'll, by the 26th of all, I refine it, I will. I, don't, I didn't price out the stone benches, I guess, made on them, but the lights, the trees, the walkway, the walkway I got a price on. I'm, I'm comfortable with all those things. I'm doing some out working now. So the real outstanding question is what are those stone benches going to cost? I'll try to get a number on those and maybe I'll up, up to the bit. Okay. I'm, I'm comfortable where it is right now, but I'll see if I refine it. Two departments, building and finance, don't have any requests for uh, the next, next next fiscal year. So, unless uh, trustees have any other questions, um, we can you know uh, save for the next the next uh, departments for the next meeting. Very good. We can we can do those with the operating budgets on Thursday. Okay. Good night, everyone. All right. Thank you. Good night. Motion.